I've had some blue jeans like that. Yeah, that sounds. Oh, shoot. Especially I don't know when enough about wet. pant weights to say it's long. <laughs> oh, I was talking shorts. You should see how big I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Okay, hey. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, just let me give you a couple of announcements. One of our players pulled out today. Um, he was having some... Uh, anxiety issues with playing with people he doesn't know so he wanted to um, he basically told me that he's not going to be able to play so I wrote him out of the story unfortunately um, he's a good friend of mine but if you can't play he can't play you know there's there's no uh, no hard feelings or anything like that it was just um, I want him to be healthy so um, so he's out. Um, got it. We got um, some new, some new uh, names. Uh, but now that now that the game is officially started, there's no changing your name. No more changing. No more changing. Um, all right. And uh, I just want everybody also also to know that I'm a very. I'd like to say. I, I, I would like to say that I'm an amiable referee, but I am set in my ways. So I like to do things the way I like to do them, and but I try to be I try to be as understanding or or um, you know friendly as possible. Um, I also have no desire to kill the party off. That that is <laughs> not you. that is not nice. a goal of mine uh <clears throat> tpks are not fun for anybody because you got to make a whole new character no but um it also like restarts the story or whatever and that's that um i would like to say that i'm a storyteller but um that's yet to be seen uh the I, um, over the last over the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, toying in my mind with a bunch of different story plots and and hooks and things like that, and I've decided I'm going to use them all. I put them all together. So so we're going to have there's going to be a lot to do. It might not be tonight. All right, so expect uh, this campaign to possibly go on and on and on. Um, there's no, there's no level cap. You know, there's no like uh, you don't earn levels to uh, to um, like end a campaign. Because I know, like in some other games, you might level to a certain point where you're so powerful that um other it's not worth playing anymore so you just, you just need to start over um in this in this campaign hopefully uh because you you do level up your skills but um uh, it's not so like your hit points don't really change and you're because you don't have any and you're uh the Leveling your skills is good. It's good to have them go up, but it's not going to. Um, it, what's what am I trying to say? It's not going to make it unmanageable. You know, you're not going to be so powerful that just your your uh, a, a, a normal creature couldn't just come up and take care of you. Okay, that's another thing. This this world is low magic. Okay, almost almost zero magic. There, there are some, there is some magic, but don't expect there to be like a magic sword around every corner or a, uh, you know, a ring of fireballs or anything like that. That's, that's not what you're going to encounter in this, in this universe. You might encounter, you might encounter things like that, but it's not, it's not, if, if there's a magic item, it's something to be in awe. Like, you go, wow, that's a magic item. You know, like, 
I, have, I haven't seen one of those before. You know, not, oh yeah, everybody's got one. There's a magic shop on this in, the, in, in every town. No, it's not like that. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to keep it as realistic as possible. Um, but it's also a fantasy world. I mean, there are elves, you know, there's our, there are monsters. The gods walk amongst you, that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's not, you know, there's ghosts. And when people talk about ghosts, it might really be a ghost, you know, that kind of stuff, not just some, you know, folktale. So, uh, okay. So you guys all have your tokens up here on the screen. And I want to make sure you all have control over your token. Can you move it around? Okay, well, looks like definitely two people can move. Raynar, Gaimar, yeah, I can move. Bernier, can Cal, Cal, can you move? Muted. Um, I'm find my yes. I can move. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure everybody had a, had uh, control over the tokens. Um, so uh, now there is a party token here. Uh, that's something that I will probably be moving for you guys uh, on. Like if you're ever like in a town or something and the party is moving together as a as a group, you know, I'll I'll probably be moving this token for you guys. Um, I don't think I gave you guys permi permission to to move it. You you might all have the ability to move it. Yeah, some of you are. Okay, that's good. Um, just in case, if you look on the left, there is a there is a calendar. Uh, the month is Lorraine or Lorani, um, and the year is 720, okay, so uh, it's not 420, it's 720, and uh, I typed in up there a little bit higher, you see where it says one hex equals five Harnock leagues, which is approximately 20 kilometers, which is approximately 12.5 miles, it's not exact, okay, so, um, but yeah, 20 kilometers, is is not really that far 12 and a half miles you you could probably if you're on a road easily walk two hexes on a road if it was straight okay so uh just so you know in a day in a day um but most people don't do that they go from major town to major town because which winds up being approximately two X's apart because of that reason. Um, because you'll stop in an inn, you know, to, to rest overnight. You don't want to stop in the middle of the road. But now if you ever go out of town, out of, out of kingdom or out of, out into the wilderness, now that's a different story. And if you go through the woods, obviously that's going to be a different story as well. Okay. So below in the calendar, you'll see, um, You'll see the, the peony, uh, which looks like a little flower. Those are, for lack of a better term, peasant holidays. And then uh, the red and white lozenge, those are <coughs> your holidays. The, uh, the uh, Lorani uh, holy days, uh, not holidays, they're holy days. So you could think of it like Sunday is a Christian holiday. You know, it's a, it's their holy day. And so if you look over here, every, uh, every, twice a week on the second day of the week, uh, and the seventh day of the week is, uh, um, a holy day, and then at the end of every week, or actually the middle of every week, is pretty much a holiday. 
you get these uh, fifth, 15 and 25. Okay, those basically just mean that's when people would go to their church. You know, they'd gather, they'd kneel in prayer or whatever, they'd listen to the sermon, you know, just like, just like what you would expect. Uh, but um, it's not something to... It's not something to um, concern yourself with in, in, in that it's just something that you can do. Uh, you notice you have piety on your character sheets. Uh, piety can be raised by attending services. So if you feel like you need to raise some piety or you need to, you know, re re connect with your God or whatever, go to the services. Um, but not every noble goes to every service. It's not uh, some of the major ones. Um, if it says high mass, you know, that's usually only the, the um, lords of the, of the, the lords and ladies of the various areas. They, they have their own like private and, and their family and uh, but when it says lay mass that's pretty much everybody can go to those okay so um, but the re that's not I'm, I'm getting sidetracked the, the reason why I put the calendar there was because I have this thing that says date and I can move it around okay so that's going to help us remember what day it is it's going to help me remember what day it is uh, and so we can progress the calendar and one of the reasons why we're going to do that is because there are some timed events that you don't know about and if you don't do them in time then then you didn't do them in time and there are some uh, world events that happen on certain days that um, will help me keep track. And plus, it'll just let you know what day it is. You know, plus, like, if you, you if you, you make an arrangement to go pick something up from a town in five days or whatever, you you will know what day it is that you need to be there. Okay, and so this is a, this is a starting screen, um, this, this home screen. I'm, I am going to be using it to show you where you are in relationship to the kingdom. So if you scroll down, uh, or if I just do that, you will have a, uh, you have this giant red pin stuck in the ground. Uh, this pin is stuck in a town called Roganter, and that is where the campaign begins. So far, everybody good to go. Yeah, can okay. you point out on the map where where our castle is, where we live? Did I not just do that? You didn't. You didn't shift. You just oh, aimed. okay. <clears throat> Derek, I'd like to ask a question. Is it a five day week, and there's six days in a six weeks in a month? That, no, there is a ten day week. It it's a 10-day week. It's a 10-day week. It's just the way the calendar is organized, it's five days in a row. Yeah. So so there's three weeks of 10 days. Correct. Okay. Every month has 30 days. Mm -hmm. It's weird, right? It's easy math. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's symmetric month. It's a symmetric, right. There's mm -hmm. none, none, none of this 28, 31 stuff. Okay. Um <clears throat> Okay, I got these little blue pins as well uh, to let you um, know where your uh, where each of you were hmm. were um, originated. Okay, so um, like we have one up here in Loban, which uh, that's. I do believe that's Mike. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, what's going on with my, okay, 
There we go. Perfect. And then uh, we got Tashal, uh, <clears throat> which I, I think is Joe. And then I'm just going off memory right now. And then there's uh, New Beth, I think, is Reynard. Yep. And Pendeth, I think, is uh, Bernie. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And so this one that was in Menarsis, that was Mike. Okay, so he's no longer with us, uh, which is good. I've got a, a character now that I can use as an NPC, <laughs> and I will. He he might be he might be the uh, an antagonist. No, he won't. He won't but, um, okay. Okay, so so you guys are in uh, Roganter. Uh, you know the date is the fifth. That's the day I have it on there. Uh, but it's not really the fifth. It's it's the night of the fifth, uh, and it's uh, like through midnight into the morning. You guys are all awake. You're all in the uh, in the chapel in the in the manor house. It's basically just. A, it's basically just a room with a small shrine on the wall. It's not, it's not like a big cathedral church or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> you're being overseen or basically um, tended to, if you wish, by uh, the Lorani priest in the in the in the keep. Uh, <coughs> Mateka Jevil. Uh, yeah, that's Mateka Jevil. Uh, Mateka it is his rank. Okay, in in the clergy. Uh, that's not his name. Uh, a Mateka is basically a priest. Um, and that's all shown at the bottom underneath. So he is a Lorani priest that serves your stepfather, Sir Sir Nevin, and he he is overseeing and keeping you guys um, company, but he's also watching you and observing you while you kneel in prayer for 24 hours uh it's your vigil right um you've already been uh it's basically this is the final step uh, normally what happens is a vigil will happen and then once the vigil is over then you might actually receive the actual knighting or it might be in reverse where they knight you and then they ask you to do a vigil. And that's what's happened. You've already been knighted, but now you're under obligation to do this vigil, which basically means you're going to be awake for 24 hours. Um, let me switch the map out just a little. So where do I have... Okay, might take a second to load. I don't know. Okay, um, this is this is the town of Roganter, uh, and at the bottom section down here, I don't know. Can you see anything? Is it blank? It is black. It is black. Okay. Black currently. I'll also, I on. like. I like how Roll20 updated and does the little borders to match the map now. It's green. Okay, so what I'll do is I will copy a party token over to the map, which should give you visibility. I hope. Yeah. Can you see stuff now? Yep. Yep. Okay, so in the bottom center right there is the manor you can see there's a uh like a that whole little section down there from the orchard to the punfold 
to the garden, the workshops, the brew house, the gatehouse, stables, the great hall, the kitchen. Okay, that is the uh, that's the manor house, and you're in the great hall, which has it's a two-story building, and uh, one of the rooms on the off off the main court. One of the one of the rooms is a, a small little um, sh shrine, really, and you guys are all in there praying okay and so i just wanted you to know uh that's that all happens before the game starts but i want to give you an opportunity to kind of look around the map before we actually begin um you'll see a mill up here uh now you'll see um all these little houses throughout the town uh have a little Lots of these little boxes behind it. Well, that's not really what it is. It's basically uh, that individual or family tends to their own little crop, their own little yard and house. Um, but then they, not only do they work their own land for their own personal, you know, vegetables or whatever, but they also work the manor crops as well, which um, is hay right now. Uh, hey, and it is almost time to, uh, to harvest. Um, <clears throat> okay, you'll also see dead center. You'll see the, the Temple to Peony. Uh, there is a graveyard there. Uh, the priest has its own, his own little house and garden. Or hers, his or hers. Okay, I don't remember. But then there's the common ground right there, and then there's a barn. That barn is actually part of the peony. Everything inside that, that road area is part of the peony. Uh, that barn is, is not really uh, what you would think of as a barn. It's more like a storage shed. Um, and then you've got uh, Um, there are some craftsmen in town, like a mason, a metalsmith. Um, if it has a name, they're probably just just farmers. Uh, some of this got offset somehow. Maybe I moved a map by accident. Okay. Um, it's a it's a fairly small little 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 town. There's not there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, the the uh, the manor house is where everything happens. You know, for you guys, right? You guys don't really hang out in town, but you can. There's nothing wrong with you visiting the metal shop or talking to the various people in town or becoming uh, cozy with them. Uh, your your lord, Lord uh, Nevin, he does not. He does not. He treats everybody with respect. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, just because you're a peasant or you work for him or you're obligated to him, it doesn't mean he he doesn't feel that he has the authority to like um, treat you like a dog, right? Um, yes, he mets out punishments and stuff like that, but only when it's necessary. And you you kind of get the idea that he's he's really a people person and not um not a not a snooty you know high, high end you know um all i care about is power kind of kind of noble that's not who he is um okay he it was given this manor by the church this manor is owned by the church he he has raised you here and he has managed this this manor uh, for the church, so it's not 
Yeah, so he he owe, he owes the church tithes every year. He has to give them a certain amount of gold coins, um, to or not gold coins, silver, to um, maintain his 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 um, well his obligation. Okay, so when you guys the the game is actually going to start with you guys finishing your vigil and exiting the uh, chapel and I need to go pull something up. There it is, perfect. Okay, so during your vigil, uh, or I'm gonna I'm gonna give the the party, the players really. I'm gonna give the players a few minutes to kind of share with each other who you are, what you stand for, why you exist, you know, what is your motivations, or, you know, whatever you want to share, or what you think your siblings would know about you. Um, and we'll start at the top of my screen. So, I guess it would be Bernier. Or Bernier? Bernier? How do I pronounce it? Yeah, I think Bernier is probably how it goes. Okay. Um, well, I'm Bernier Holiday, Holly Day, and and uh, come from the furthest place away, as you saw from the main map. Um, my father was is a herdsman, and um, I do believe that he was single, um, because I think he's a widower. And my guess, you know, I was a young child. But my guess is he wasn't doing so well. And so um, that's because took, that, I'm going to cut you off. That's because nowadays, you know, that men can have babies. <laughs> yeah, I, I identify as a knight. <laughs> um, but uh, sorry, I didn't mean to throw everything off. Go no, ahead, no, that's on. fine. So anyway, at 12 years old, I think like like all of us here, uh, I was uh, adopted into uh, the for the uh, household and uh, to be honest, that's the why. I, I really didn't have any say in it as a 12-year-old, but I was eager to do it. I mean, I didn't expect to be a herdsman. Uh, I also didn't expect to be a knight, so I'm pretty much in awe of, of everything around me um, on this occasion. But I am a very small, diminutive person, and I'm, I have doubts as to whether I can I can pull this off. So... <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Uh, what I stand for is uh, the Church of Lorani. I think uh, being pious is is uh, the name of the game in this case. Uh, I had uh, huge respects for uh, Sir Nevin, uh, but I'm not the brightest uh, light in the in the in the store. I'll tell you. It's uh, so I I try hard and I barely succeed. And when I do, I'm I'm pretty happy. And that's usually Sir Nevin's look at I get from him when <laughs> every time I do something, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's about it. Okay, perfect. Um, let's go with Cal. All right. Um, <clears throat> Cal came from outside of Tashal. His family was a, uh, a group of farmers. He is the second eldest and the eldest of the adopted children. Um, it's a role he takes rather seriously to try and be a good example to the others. Um, he really admires uh, Sir Nevin and looks at him as an example of where he should be, and he's trying to follow that example and set the example for everyone else. Um, when he sets his mind to something, you are not 
going to change his general direction or his demeanor. He is um, one of these people that he is, once he decides on a course of action, that's it. Um, he's moving forward and you're not going to change his mind. Um, very much uh, wants to set a good example, wants to, even if personally he doesn't um, feel very strongly about something, if it's going to set a better example for the others, he will just suck it up and do it because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, so that he is uh, is leading by example. That's his biggest thing. He he takes that point very uh, very seriously as one of the elder brothers. And he's very protective of the rest of you. Um, so that's where we are with that. All right, that sounds good. Um, big brother. Okay, so let's uh, go with Reynard. Ah, yes, surprise. Um, <clears throat> uh, Reynard is from outside of Nubeth. Uh, son of farmers, of course, as many of us are. Um, Raynard believes, I believe, that the, the way to live your best possible life and bring out your true potential is by being well-rounded and uh, focusing not only on physically training your sword arm, but training your mind and spirit as well. Uh, he's a very pious individual. Um, and in addition to the, the training you were required to undergo, he'd started learning uh, Kuzan, the Dwarvish language on the side, as a few other um, skills. Sorry. Uh, he also insists on learning the flute, though I have no skill in that yet, so he's just carrying a flute that he plays badly sometimes. <clears throat> he is the second of the adopted children, and takes a good example from Sir Nevin, and I just accidentally clicked a tab that's lovely. Go into a trap room app. Um, he, t he takes a strong example from Sir Nevin's treatment of the other people. Um, sorry, I don't know why I keep losing my train of thought. And uh, that he tries to um, make himself familiar with the, the commoners in town. Uh, my best friend being the peony priest who takes care of the graveyard, um, and I can frequently be found helping him tend the graveyard, as well as working his crops in our spare time. Uh, that's, that's a good intro, I think. Okay, well, that's great. All right, and then the last one will be, is it Gaimar? Yep, Gaimar, okay. um, although I'm sure most everybody um, would call him Guy. They hate, that's probably what he typically would go by. Okay. <clears throat> Gaimar's uh, just 18. I don't know exactly where that places him in the order. I assume I might be one of the youngest, if not the youngest. You should be. Um, I think everyone else is 19. Okay. I am 19. And uh, like, uh, like everyone else, I was... Uh, Adopted at the age of 12 uh, from the town of Loban. Um, my father was a farmer as well. Um, he, Guy, is really excited about being a knight, and he wants some action. He wants to make his name. He wants, perhaps, maybe, he knows it may not be possible, but if there's some ballads that were written about him, that, would, that wouldn't be bad. Um, he is a follower of Lorani, um, which I believe is kind of a, a war, warrior type goddess, right? That's correct. Okay. So he takes that to heart. Um, she's the lady and, of paladins. Yeah. So he is, uh, sort of determined to prove not 
just to himself, but to his brothers that he um, is capable and w will be there, uh, a solid uh, person that they can rely on, especially when things get tough. Um, kind of his, on the side, he has been working towards his tra tracking and hunting skills. Um, so that he has been uh, hanging out sort of, a, I'm trying to think of the name, I think his name was Joban, um, the, the town animal warden, and that's sort of trying to get as much information and, you know, about tracking and hunting and those sorts of things from, from his locals. And, You're talking uh, about like the herdsman? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was the character that he sort of has a contact with. I know okay. you didn't ask us that, so. Oh, John. John, the animal warden. And I think he's a, he's a beetle. He's a beetle at the church um, as well. So I think that's about it. He's ready. He's, he wants to see some action, although he's not he's not going to charge in without thinking about things, but he, he's definitely excited about the potential of now being a knight. Wait. Okay. That sounds good. All right. So, um, having just finished your vigils, uh, spending the night with, uh, each other and, uh, Basically in silence. I mean, you, you have like silent prayer, uh, praying for your, uh, you know, good fortunes in the future and strength to to carry on and, you know, all the all that good stuff. I mean, you got many hours to contemplate all this uh, in the morning. Uh, the. Jebel, which. Uh, the the the. The priest that has uh, he's been with Sir Nevin for as long as you have been with Sir Nevin. He's he's basically uh, assigned by the church to this manor to make sure that Sir Nevin uh, receives whatever advice or holy blessings or or whatever. So he's basically, uh, I wouldn't call him necessarily a spy, but he does report back to the church quite a bit. Um, just, but it's, but it's all been, 99% uh, of it has been favorable and, and saying, you know, he's doing this, he's doing that. It's, you know, it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, he's not saying, or at least as far as you know, he, he hasn't been saying things like, this guy's a heathen, he needs to be kicked out of the church. No, it's nothing like that. So, um, as far as you can tell, this family and all of its, all of its um, components, like all the, the, the staff, they all seem to be very happy together this whole this whole um manner is unusually happy <laughs> everybody is i mean not not like running around being like giggly but they're they're not um at odds with each other they're not um they're not trying to uh reach beyond their means you know they're not trying to uh stab each other in the back or anything like that it's, it just seems like a nice i mean there's always a little bit of squabbling between siblings and stuff like that but it's not um nothing serious right okay so jebel comes in and he says oh, all right all right guys um your vigil is over uh, the breakfast is being prepared, so clean yourselves up, and, and you guys, by the way, are very hungry, because you just had 24 hours of nothing to drink and nothing to eat, and so 
you're 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 ready for this this uh, breakfast, and he says, uh, Sir Nevin is um, going to have uh, morning breakfast, and you you are um, guests of honor, and uh, which you normally sit and eat with your father and family and everything anyway, but. This this just seems like he's he's going out of out of his way to make it sound like it's something special. Uh, all right, and uh, you know we have a we have a, a hog, and you know all the fixings, and uh, bring your appetite, and uh, I'll see you I'll see you in about one hour, and then he gathers his stuff, and walks out. You guys are free to do what you would like to do. You do smell uh, pork being cooked, and you smell bread. You've been smelling it for the last few hours, and it's really kind of, you know, gotten to you. Oh, I'm starving. My mouth's right. watering. Right. So we've been kneeling for 24 hours? Yes. The first thing I do is stand up. She, <laughs> oh, Lorani. <laughs> right. Oh, I got to get some yeah, in here. Guy is definitely had, has to stretch his legs and walk around the room and uh, swinging his arms about trying to get some blood flow back. back exactly. Body. All right. Yeah, so you guys are doing the old morning calisthenics. Not exactly, but I get you. <laughs> punch, um, punch guy's shoulder. Man, we made it. Yeah, Night. no kidding. Uh, we need to get out weapons. there. There must be somebody that's that needs needs the hammer of, of Alarani brought down on them. Brought in How line. About cleaning yourself up, guys. That'd be a start. You don't want Dad bringing the hammer of Lorani down on you for showing up and not looking neat. That's good. Good. Yes. <laughs> Probably go and um, clean up myself uh, if I need to to shave any <laughs> stubble, get some nice clothes on, and try to suppress my hunger pangs and and not. And, and tell myself, do not act like a pig at the dinner table. Do not immediately grab food and shove it in my mouth. Uh, it is dawn, right? So uh, you would think that people are people in the village and and it in the manor are just now getting up and getting ready to go about their business for the rest of the day. So there's not a whole lot of activity out in the courtyard or in the house. So, I mean, in the house, there's a lot of activity because they're making ready for the, the meal. Uh, but that's off in the kitchen, which is a, a separate building. So, you go and... What's the bathing situation here? Is it go down to the river, use the well? Is there, is there, there a are bath? There are um, pots that or they're they're like buckets they're very large buckets that you can sit inside um, okay it's not um it's like your 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 knees are pulled up nice and close to you it's not it's not a roman bath you know you're you're sitting you know fairly tight and you're scrubbing and someone's pouring hot water in from from the uh from the fire or cold water if you if you prefer but yeah or you can just stand there with a rag and just do the old you know touch up well we've got an hour you have an hour i, th I think i think i'll head down to the river bank and not make someone pour me a bath at dawn this seems kind of kind of rude so you're going to you're going to act like a peasant. Okay. I'd like to hear it. 
You're going to be one of the the common folk. Let's just do the normal morning routine, except this this time take these clothes off and put on appropriate clothes for for the breakfast. New underclothes and and a wash up. So do the things. If I wait for him to fill up my tub, I got to think about how hungry I am. The brisk morning air will keep my mind off it. No, that's fine. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't. I don't have any problem with you running down to the stream and scrubbing up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, nobody watches you because it's early in the morning. Nobody's out in the crops or anything like that, so that's not a problem. And it's not that far away. You know, I don't know if you guys can see this, uh, but you got a measuring tool, and you're looking at 500 feet, 600 feet. You know, so that's not a problem. Plus, you can see the local scale at the bottom, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's really not that far. I'll ask him to bring me back something from the orchard. Sneak me sneak me back an apple. <laughs> do we have our own individual rooms here at the manor? You uh, do not. You are all in the same room. Okay. Uh, the the there is a you have a brother that's not here he is uh femith uh it's this guy uh femith is the older brother he's 24 and he's married has children and uh, he lives in the house, and he and his wife and children all live in the same room. Uh, the the mother. Here we go. Here we go. That would be your stepmom. That's Lady Arena. She is. Uh, her and and Nevin have their own room, obviously, and. Uh, and the priest has his own room. But other than that, uh, people, the, the servants have a, a solid, a single room, and you, your fairly large group of four people have a, your own room as well. So, yeah, you would keep your stuff in there, and uh, you have your own little chest to keep, keep your personal belongings in, things like that. That's no problem. Do we have a daily routine that we're like chores and responsibilities we're supposed to do every day? Um, yes, uh, but it's not chores. It's more like training. Um, you've been, you have been groomed to be warriors. And uh, early on, when you were 12, when you got here, all you did was clean the house, repair the fences, you know, uh, make sure the, the, the roof was repaired because it had a big hole in it, you know, and you did all that work. And then when you got to be about 14 or so, things started to change. Everything changed to, here, pick up this sword and learn the weight of it and and all that. And then gradually you learned a little bit about how to repair your weapons, how to fight, how to ride horses, you know, stuff like that. And you basically were groomed to be warriors. And those those daily chores kind of slowly disappeared. And uh, other people assumed that those um, those responsibilities. So you really don't have any. Right now you don't have I was gonna it's just ready to get for breakfast. It's really all you have to do. I was gonna say I, I think we're sort of changing our careers now, so I, it is interesting what will be expected of us now as knights, you know. Um Right, because most um well you're you're you you were acknowledged as a knight bachelor, which basically means you're a, a mannerless night which basically means you don't own the place um and uh that's 
that's about the uh, yeah what you're you're kind of in limbo right now you really don't know it sounds like but you're you're about to find out all right i'm gonna head back to the barracks and um just use a basin to wash myself up change right. into some nice clothing okay um so basically, everybody's doing pretty much the same thing. You're just getting yep. ready for breakfast, mm -hmm. cleaning up, making sure you're not um, out of place or unusual, you know, and you make your way to the, uh, it's not a feast hall, it's basically just a large dinner table in the middle of the court uh, uh, with like a, there would be a, a chair at the end. Some would call it a throne. He doesn't treat it as a throne. He just calls it the head ta the head table. And then uh, the rest of the table, this table would get pushed to the side uh, whenever he's accepting guests or or uh, uh, or locals that might have grievances or something like that. But right now the table's in the middle of the room with. Uh, not chairs, it's more like um, uh, benches, I guess. I don't know what you would call them. Um, yeah, like uh, it's a lot like a park bench, right? You got your table and straight, straight chairs. And uh, there's a ton of food. And you guys, uh, they're the, the servants, the, which there are about a dozen, eight to a dozen servants that work in the in the manor they are making trips to the kitchen and back bringing enough food to make sure everybody's satisfied um, ale is uh, brewed in-house it's a house brew uh, which is not unusual uh, most manors have their own brew house uh, you do have a a uh, a a brew, what do they call it? A brew mate? Well, it's a, it's a lady. So it's like a... Ale wife? Ale wife. Yeah, that's exactly what it's called. And uh, they, that's her responsibility, right? And then sometimes she'll go into town or she'll give some of the kitchen staff money to go into town to get, uh, to get supplies and stuff like that. Uh, but that's that okay so you guys are seated and eating uh you'll notice that something's a little different at this table the that you don't you haven't seen in the past jevil the the priest is seated with the family so he is he's at uh the furthest away that's not the wife because you have the husband at one end and then the wife at the other end and then the kids and, and family and relatives are all sitting along the sides. But uh, Jevil, the priest, normally doesn't eat with the family. Normally he eats alone by himself or away. But he's sitting, he's sitting with you guys. So that, that, that just should tell you something is a little bit different. Do, do we expect that we'll have to uh, say a, give a speech or, or be called on in any way? Um, I'm not sure the ceremony of the knighthood. Uh, no, probably or, not. No, no, it doesn't look like uh, Nevin's not the the kind of lord that really concerns himself with that. He he would normally let uh, Jevil say grace while standing behind him. And then everybody else would, you know, say amen or however, however it works for Lorani. And then, uh, and then he would leave while everybody else digs in and eats. But this time he's actually seated, seated. Um, and, uh, but he does, as normal, he does say grace. And he basically, uh, is speaking in a tongue that you don't recognize. And it's it's not normal. This is the first time we've heard this tongue? No. 
you heard him use it in his own personal prayers and and during worship um you suspect that okay hold on i'll let you i'll give you a roll let me I, it might be religion Lorani. You guys should all have uh what is going on here? Okay, you guys should all have a ritual. Okay, I don't see one on on this on Cal's character sheet. Um I have one. No, no, no. Check. I see the piety. I don't see the ritual. Yeah, let me double check. I thought everybody should have a ritual for their religion, but I could be wrong. It's going to be some growing pains. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Now I'm in character creation real quick. Okay. Yep, it's SB1. So, um, let's take a look at Lorani there. Yeah, everybody should have ritual at, at, at least at SB1. So, okay. if, you, if you want to go ahead and add it, uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's the average... Of three stats. Um, not those three. Here we go. Uh, voice, intelligence, and willpower. Okay, I know what mine is. And if you, and if you have, Ang. Or on, you get uh, pluses as your sun sign. Was that a, a, a lore skill? It is a religion ritual skill. Ritual, okay. SB1. So it shouldn't be four, it should be one. Yeah. <laughs> also, if there's ever a time that I need you to make a skill roll and you do not have the skill, you can still roll, you just have to get a 5% or less. You have a 5% in every skill. Just not exactly, but you don't know the skill. That, uh, how does this thing work again? I did the... 29, you, you take the average of that? Yeah. So 9.5? Which would be 10. 10. Yep. So SB1, and so the ML is 10? The ML is Master 10. level. That's oh, right. Okay. That's right. ML would be 10. Like, it looks like Sir Reynard had a 13, mm -hmm. and he got a marginal failure. Everybody's getting a marginal failure, which you would assume because unless you already have, unless you got a pretty high ri ritual skill. 
Mm -hmm. Waiting for Cal if he wants to roll. You don't have to. I think I did, but you hit the roll on the side, right? Yep. The little ten, d the little D10. You just click it. Yep. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, nice. No, that was that was me, and I clicked the arrow to see what it would do. Oh. Um, <clears throat> okay, that is you. If you rolled a ninety-nine, that should not be success. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, so you hit the arrow. Yeah. Did it change anything on your character sheet? No. Good. That's when you level up. <laughs> but Cal, oh, Cal needed a 14, and he got a 13, so he has marginal success. That's uh, right. Yeah, so you're the only one. So um, he is using an old, ancient dialect of Lorani, uh, a, 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 a Lorani... Um, like church language when he uh, and so you've heard it a few times before you you might have asked him like what are you what are you saying you know in previous times and he told you it's it's an old Lorani dialect um, okay. that that they use only in specific rituals <clears throat> I'm um, really kind of giving the hairy eyeball. All right. Something's very different going on. Right. Okay, so uh, once he's done saying grace, and everybody's kind of just sitting there, you know, minding their own business, looking up, uh, wanting, you know, not sure exactly how they're supposed to react to this. Some people know exactly what they're supposed to do, you know, because they've been around the block. Um, <laughs> and... Once he's done, he looks over to the Lord. The Lord uh, takes a piece of ham and he, he says, All right, this is in your honor. You, you brand new knights of the realm. And then he starts eating. And everybody assume, uh, not just you guys, but everybody else just digs into the food, you know, waiting for the Lord to take the first bite. All right. I'm going to uh, slowly ease my way into this food. Okay. I'm starving. I'm starving, but I don't want to embarrass myself. You don't want to just of, take uh, the whole everybody. pig and just... I want to do that, but yeah. I'm not going to do that. Have you ever watched yeah. Asterix in Britain? Or Asterix at all? Uh -uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an animated series about a gall... Uh, and one of the characters is like has super strength, and he just picks up whole pigs and just spins them and eats them. It's okay. Never mind. Okay, look it up. Asterix. <laughs> um, all right. I think it's a German. I think they're originated in Germany, but they're translated. Okay. So. Um, Okay, you guys are uh, eating. Everybody's eating. The, the kids are eating. The, the people are eating. Everybody's basically just chowing down. There's no real... Um, even, even the Lord and the Lady, they're both, they're both eating. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to do uh, anything unusual? Or just eat, just like everyone do else. We, do we know what our events for the day are, into, are entailing? You have no idea what your future entails. So there was no plans for the day that we were aware of. Okay. Well, you 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 kind of you knew that you were going to have your you, you were you were knighted the day before, mm -hmm. uh, by Sir Nevin, uh, and the church, and then. Uh, the the vigil took place, um, and it ended, and you knew that you were going to have like a ceremonial breakfast, and then uh, that's basically all they told you. They didn't tell you anything else. All right. But uh, as far as Sir Nevin was concerned, over the last year or so, you knew you knew this day was coming. 
Um, it's not like a surprise, you know, hey, this is, this is what's happening. Um, you got the feeling that he was going to eventually, once he thought that you were, uh, once you felt you were worthy of becoming a knight, he was going to knight you. And then at that point, he really can't hold you uh, in the manor anymore um, because uh, you're basically... Um, the the church doesn't want to support um, extra knights in their employ uh -huh. because of this manor house. There's only one knight assigned to this manor. By you guys being there, you're you're you've all of a sudden become guests of the house overnight. You you're not you. you you are attached to the manor. You're still as kids as far as they're concerned and everything. But because you're knights now, you're expected to make your own. Go out and do what you, yeah. Yeah. But, there, but there, he didn't say anything about, I'm pushing you out. Go do this. You know, just because you got knighted yesterday, you have to leave today. Nothing like that's happening. Is this a very liberal place and we're all going to get a dowry? Um, no. <laughs> Bummer. Maybe if you kiss the right boots and, <laughs> you know. But no. Okay, so uh, so after the, after the vigil and your ceremonial breakfast it's pretty much winding down um, Sir, Sir Nevin speaks up. And he says, I'm proud of you, my boys. You guys have proven everything that I expected of you and more. And this world doesn't know what they've got themselves into. Some of you will be famous. Some of you will not survive the year. Which one is that? Um, I wish nothing but the best of you. And uh, you're welcome to stay in the manor as long as you would like. You are not being asked to leave or be ushered out or... Um, I just, uh, I just can't, uh, afford, as you know, I can't afford, uh, additional nights in the, in the village. So w all that means is if you want to stay here, just don't expect anything. Uh, don't expect, um, like compensation. You're welcome to stay here as family. Um, I would recommend uh, that you pre prepare yourselves for when you do eventually decide to 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 depart. Uh, maybe with uh, getting your equipment cleaned and uh, in order and. Uh, and then maybe, uh, if you wish, you know, say your farewells to whoever you wish to in, in town or here in, in, in the manor. And then tomorrow, I have a surprise for you. Wow. And then he gets up and he... Uh, Wipes his mouth with his with his handkerchief and throws it down on his plate, and then a servant girl comes in and grabs the plate and leaves, and says, "I will be in my quarters if 
And then you see that he almost faints. He stood up yeah. too fast. You know how older people do. No. He stands up too fast, and then he, he grabs his heart, and he almost faints. He grabs the chair by the back of the chair, and then catches his breath, and says, I'll be in my chambers resting. I don't feel well. And then you can see, uh, after a physician roll, <laughs> make a physician roll. All right. This is a di moment. this is a diagnostic role. It's basically just a straight physician. Okay, I see. Uh, guy Mar guy got a failure. Oh, look at that! Nice. Reynard got a success. Failure, failure. Okay, so Reynard, you you recognize? Um, you don't know the details because you didn't get a critical success. But you do tell that he is sick. He has, like, not the flu, but he's got like a cold, or his his, his skin is a little bit white, and his, uh, uh, you know, like sick people look. And he's got, uh, and and he also when he stood up, his his heart didn't keep up. And then he and his wife kind of walk out of the room. And all the servants and the rest of the fam families gather their stuff. And they stand up near you guys, congratulate you, pat you on your back. Uh, say you guys are going to, you guys are going to do well out there. And, and hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, you bring you bring fame to the household, and and uh, you know nothing but the best wishes for you all. And and if you need any advice, don't come to me because I don't know what I'm talking about. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's basically the same thing your family has always told you. You know, so but they're all just very happy that you've got you've gotten elevated and you're ready to ready to rock and roll. And then they leave. They kind of. Scatter. They go about to their own corners of the mansion or the manor, and so you guys can. Uh, you're free to do whatever you want. Early morning. Mid morning. Have, have we seen Sir Nevin act this way before physically? Is this the first time we've seen this? Yes. Another question: Is there some expectation since we're training to be a knight? that we know what night bachelors would do in our situation. It's like, like, is the church have an, a standing army or standing guard services or other places? I mean, do we kind of have an inkling where we might be headed? Not that we would, but. You have suspicions. There... You have, you, you have like um, other, other night bachelor to draw information off of. But yes, you know that there are what what a what a a landless knight normally does is seek land. Okay, um, the way they usually do this is by proving themselves, showing off in front of lords that can grant land, or by hiring themselves out to like you were thinking the church mm -hmm. or another manor. Or another castle that might have the need for more than just one night, you know. Um, there are certain lords that have standing forces that you might wish to uh, align yourselves with, uh, but at that at that point you become um, less your own and more of someone else's property, and then but you could do that. And uh, uh, now the way Sir Nevin, what he did when he was a uh, bachelor was he would travel. And this is this is stories that he's told you many times. He traveled uh, the land, the kingdom, and he even ventured out and, and went to some neighboring kingdoms and deliberately went. Well, first, first of all, when he was a squire. He followed knights that uh, would go to tournaments 
to 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 not only hone their fighting prowess, but also to make a name for themselves. But in addition to that, tournaments usually have cash prizes. So there's uh, a way to build up your your um, your coffers, and then you can, if you can find uh, a keep or a, a, a manner that is available, you can petition to buy it and then have your own keep. But uh, that's not what he did. What he did was he ventured with these knights that went to tournaments in and out of the kingdom and did make a name for themselves, became great warriors in their own right. And then when he was knighted, uh, he went to the church to, to ask for advice and they immediately uh, offered him a, a manor here that he could manage because they because the previous owner had just um, departed this world and so he took over as the new and and when he took over the place was run down the village was kind of empty uh, there was it, it was was not well managed and he has brought it back from the brink uh, part, of, part of that was, and um, I think you would know this, I think uh, you might have learned this in the last uh, seven years of being with him, that he didn't adopt you, per se. What he did was, when he became a knight... People had approached him, your fathers, had approached him to take you on as a knight, and they paid him. So Sir, Sir Nevin profited from taking you in as his charge. And he used a lot of that money to help re restore and rebuild uh, this manor uh, and village. Um, congratulated. I don't, know, I don't know if I showed you, if, if I mentioned that before, but yeah, that's how it came about. Yep, you're all congratulated. There, there are people wandering um, around. We'll be very polite, but I'm going to actually follow after uh, my father and just make absolutely certain he's all right. Uh, to the best of my ability, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 You you're welcome in his bedchamber at any time. Pretty much. You know. It's yeah. not. It's not like. Um, it's not off limits to you guys. But yeah, you you go in there. He is laying, uh, in bed. Uh. uh the his. Uh, your mom, uh, is undressing him. Taking his, taking his uh, regalia off of him so that he can be more comfortable in the bed. She's tucking him in. The uh, one of the uh, midwives or whatever, one of the servants is bringing uh, cold blankets in, little towels to put on his head and clean him. And he 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 looks like he's sick. Yeah, you know, I'm there's sure. there's no leeching going on here. Yep. How long has he been like this? Since breakfast. I'm going to now turn to Dad. And how long have you been feeling under the weather? Oh, my boy. I, uh, it's been... It's probably been... Last night I started feeling feeling sick. You know, ever since that yeah. rain the other day. I think I got a cold... Is there anything I can do to help you? Is there a player talking? Is there a physician in town? I don't remember if we have one. A physician in town? Hmm. 
Mm, peony priests are known for their healing. Um, I, I yeah, don't but, remember what the priest's name is, but I would ask, would you like me to send for them? They have something that could help you feel better? Um, if, you don't need to do... do, do um, you don't need to do that. I mean, this is this will this will pass, unless you feel, unless you, feel, if you feel like you need the comfort of the priest, um, I I. I'm I'm stronger than this. I can I can, I can overcome any illness. That's good, Father. I I do appreciate your, the way you feel, but. For those of us who like to hedge our bets a little bit, I think I'm going to send for him. I just want to make certain that you're more comfortable. Not that you couldn't beat it, but let's make certain you can be as comfortable as possible. Be back with him. Okay. I give Mother a very knowing look and turn and walk out. Okay. And I will go get the... Uh, um, I will tell my brothers that I'll be back in a minute, and I go to get the uh, the glebe, the village priest. The glebe. I I don't know if that's the that's the term I know of it from playing the game from years ago, but you might use a different one. Okay, give me a second. G-L-E-B-E. -E. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. He's such a glebe. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> would the glebe be in the city and not in our uh, little town here? No, he would, be in the, he would be in the center of <clears throat> town by the common. Okay, just, just so you know, sure, to update everybody, the glebe is the land that the priest owns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the land that is cultivated by the cleric. All right. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah, no worries. At least you do that, right? Okay, so... Yeah. Um, You're going to need help getting it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you want to go talk to the... Um, the, da, 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 the priest. Yep. Which, I, of course, I put everybody else's name on here. Except for the priest. I just put priest. <laughs> Chapel? The, the okay, that's breakfast? that's the Lorani uh, priest. Oh, he's, okay. he's going in town to find the uh, peony uh, priest. Mm -hmm. And I... Okay, now I know where it is. Lanith of Kerrig. Uh, Lanith uh, is a middle-aged plump, plump priest of Peony. So um, you go to, I assume, his home, or are you sending somebody? No, I'm going. Okay. Yeah, so, whoops, let's pick a select. So, um, when you go up to the peony, uh, he's got a house just off to the side, and then he's got a temple right there. And uh, after a short amount of time looking for him, you find him. He's, he's actually in the back of his house, in his glebe, um, where he is managing his uh, vegetables. <sighs> and he's he's a plump uh, priest. Oh. Um, I, I only just realized there are two Laniths. Um, it's actually the, the, the priest one is the one I had meant as my friend, just for clarification. Okay. Um, Lana, 
My father's not feeling well. If you could very quietly but come with me and not mention it to anyone, I'd really like it if you could take a look at him and make certain that he's not more sick than he's letting on, and then see if maybe you can make him comfortable. Absolutely. Well, lead the way. Do I, and then uh, he he goes into his home and grabs a little satchel. And I will escort him up and make certain he makes it through uh, the, the guards and everyone else without any real difficulty so that we can just get him there. Okay. Why? Okay. My camera was off. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he follows you through the yard and the, the town and everything else and comes into the manor. Um, he's been to the manor a few times before. He's not a regular. Um, he basically tends to the flock, if you know. But everybody, even the manor, is part of his flock, so as far as he's concerned. So yeah, he comes in and you lead him to the uh, the great the great hall where where the yep. second floor where your father's room is, and he goes in there I'll and knock and and announce him just so that they know he's here. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he goes to work. Wonderful. You, you see you. him pull out all manner of like scalpels and no I'm kidding no he's just he's basically just pulling out like various uh, tools to to measure him and to uh, make sure his fingers are actually straight and not crooked and he's he's going through a lot of you have no idea why they're doing it Some things I just made up on the fly because he's doing weird things. You like, why is he doing that? I don't know. It's because you're not a physician. Nope. All right. I will. Uh... And the wife is there holding his hand, you know, yeah. and I'm just going to walk over and basically look and go, I'm going to leave him to do his work. Mother, uh, let me know if you need anything. And then I'm going to go down See my brothers. Okay, yeah. Uh, she she gives you a a, a a a nod, and she doesn't look worried. She looks mm -hmm. she looks like uh, a mother of uh, a son that's got a cold. You know, she's not mm -hmm. she's not like panicking or anything like that. Yeah. Which is fine. I'm just more of let's make dad comfortable, but yeah. <laughs> For sure. The old and, worry work. Yeah, worry work. Overprotective. Maybe me. Yeah. Damn so, right I am. That's right. Take care of me. Okay, so uh, you find your brothers doing what? What are they doing? Brothers? Hmm. Well, we were just awake, kneeling in place for 24 hours, and then I took a cold bath and ate a big meal. I think it's time to sleep. You have been up for 24 hours. Yeah, just mm -hmm. a little, little shut-eye. Okay. What about the rest of you? Yeah, I think I'll probably do the same and, and, yep. and ask that um, if anything should change with Sir Neville that, you know, they wake us. So... Um, yeah, when you, can, when you you see... When you see Raynard pass out, you, you kind of get the same, uh, like, oh, that looks like a good idea. <laughs> uh, Just Raynard exactly. does snore incredibly loudly. Did you roll for that? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I could right. just lay down on the top of the bed like we're just going to nap. I mean, this isn't down for the night. This is just going to be a nap. That right, was right. the uh -huh. expectation. Exactly. Probably going to 
zonk out pretty good. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will be doing the same as soon as I'm certain I know where my brothers are and let them know that I've got someone tending to dad. The ones that are still awake. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they, okay. they haven't uh, invented a sword yet that can bring him down. I doubt a cold could do it. Okay, so the next thing you know is you're being woken up. Okay, they're, they're shaking you. Uh, someone is shaking you. Not violently, just, my lord, my lord, it's time to get up. It's breakfast. Oh. We lost a day. <laughs> wow. It is now the, sa uh, the seventh. The seventh, uh, you are, um, you can smell the, the bacon and the, uh, the ham from yesterday that wasn't eaten and, uh, you know, and the honey and the, and and the ale, you can you can smell it all. It is time for breakfast. But this is a more moderate breakfast. It is it is not uh, the celebratory, you know, big huge spread that got you guys so stuffed, and uh, the beds were so comfortable, and nobody disturbed you. You did sleep all day. Okay, so the seventh. Uh, who is your your father is at the at the at the breakfast table, uh, and and the families are there as well, and they're all waiting. And uh, the um, the uh, it it starts like any other breakfast would start. Uh, and you guys are just, and, and he's sitting there eating. You can tell that he, uh, doesn't feel well. He's not, uh, he's under the weather, right? It's not, he's not, he, he forced himself to get out of bed, to come down to eat with you guys, uh, because he's got something to tell you. Um, All right. so as soon as we're done with breakfast, I have important news for you and um but let's enjoy this meal and then we'll uh i'll get into that okay, okay so then everybody's everybody's just eating and you guys are you're not going crazy like you did yesterday and there's really not as much food on the table as there was yesterday um and you don't forget you missed uh lunch and dinner but that's okay you ate enough for the entire day uh, so you, while you guys are eating, you hear the manor door slam open. It's like a boom and everybody kind of, including yourself, look over to the manor door, which the exterior door leads directly into the dining room. Okay. So the, this, you're sitting in the dining room when the, Door is open. You can see outside in the courtyard. So um, this door slams open. This guy comes running in. You recognize him. He is uh, he is Jendal of Sankey. He's the local Woodward. Jendal. Okay, I got. It. I have a handout for him. Okay. So Jendal, uh, it, it says, I don't know if you guys see this, but if you scroll down under the picture, it says Valene and Woodward. Okay, a Valene is a landholder in a village. So they're like, he has, he has a lien that he has to pay to the manor for his little crop. So, so he has, one of these houses is his in town. Uh, and he's the Woodward, which you all know that his duty is not the crops. He doesn't, he doesn't go farming the fields and stuff like that. That's not what he does. 
he manages the woods. He goes out into the woods. He makes sure the there's no dead carcasses out there attracting wolves. He makes sure that in any underbrush that might or tree branches that fall on the road get cleared off. Stuff like that. He basically is like a a forester. Okay, if you want to call it that. Uh, and he's he comes running in and he goes, My lord, my lord. Uh, uh, we, we, we have a situation. And and uh, Lord Nevin says, "Calm down, slow down. You know, have a bite. To, have a bite to eat, and tell me what's going on." And he 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 doesn't he doesn't reach on the table and grab any food. And he says, uh, uh, "While I was while I was doing my 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 duty in the woods, uh, uh, I was I was clearing and stacking deadfall." Uh, that maybe we could use. Never mind. I, I'm. 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 Not, I'm. I'm. The issue. The. The. Just west of town. Um. I heard screams, and I heard sounds of battle. So, I figure if it's in the woods, it's part of my responsibility. But I didn't know what to do. So. I. I. I snuck. I snuck, through the woods. You know. Because I didn't want anybody to see, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I saw, I saw maybe three, maybe more uh, bandits. They're they're killing, they were killing the tr these these travelers, these merchants on the road. I, I I saw many many of the travelers were struck down, and. I thought I thought it would be best for me to come and report it. And then Sir Sir Nevin, you can see that he's 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 not feeling well, but he's he it looks like he's thinking clearly. Um and he says We're gonna have to do something about this. And then he goes, Boys and he looks at you guys. Um yep. This would be a good opportunity <laughs> to met out the Lord's justice. If I have bandits on my roads and they're dispatching travelers, then we're going to have to do something about it. So... So, Jendel, uh, can you show them? Can you show them where this was? How far out is it? He goes, oh, about two miles. Two miles down the road. We can get there in just a couple of minutes. Do we keep well, our arms in our barrack, or is there a, another place where our arm and armor, arms and armor would be? Your personal, yeah. your personal arms and armor is probably on you, because uh, you're a knight, and that is your business suit. Now, if it's early morning breakfast, you probably don't have it on you. It's probably in your next to your bunk. Uh, you might or might not have a mannequin that you set it up on. Probably not, because it's mm -hmm. chainmail. So you probably just fold it up and sit it on the. On the uh, well, if it's not chain, well, it might be leather, but you just set it on your uh, dresser at the end of the table. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not Hollywood. Yeah. So you just basically <laughs> take it off, throw it on the bed, tuck it under your pillow. However you want to do it. Uh, out of character question here too. Um, yeah. As independent knights now. If we were to want to acquire a squire, is that something that we have to pay for, obviously, out of pocket and everything? And is that something that you only do after a certain amount of time, you know, if you're a knight? Um, yes, you can acquire, you can nominate volunteers to be your squires. Um, normally... Um, that process is 
uh, you don't take them on immediately as a squire. You take them on as like a page or a something like that, and they work for you for a while. And then once you deem them worthy, you elevate them to squire. And then after a while, uh, or once they've proven themselves, usually about six or seven years in your service, or if they do something outstanding, then then you can you can nominate them or elevate them as a squire or as a knight or uh or um any knight can can elevate another knight and i'll oh. elevate a squire to a knight uh it's it but it's not done it's, it's not done willy-nilly what's that i might be a good replacement if we do die if, if we could at some point acquire squires that way we oh would... yeah yeah um but you know that uh, Sir Nevin, uh, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have anyone set aside to like be your squire. Sure. Okay. So, but that is something that's going. That's on the docket. But uh, I, I mean, it was going to be discussed until you got interrupted. Yeah. Gentle. <laughs> Tendall, stay here while we get our uh, uh, armor and arms uh, equipped, and you can show us. Okay, you can, okay. Uh, on the way, you can explain uh, the number and describe these men to us. Okay. Yeah, so you, you take a few minutes. Um, it, it's not going to take all that amount of time. So on your character sheet, be sure to mark um, anything that you're carrying on your person as carried or on your person uh, it should affect your encumbrance which should affect any die rolls that are going to be needed and it will uh, change what your armor values are and just let me know when everybody is ready we can Basically, that is the amount of time it takes for you guys to put all your stuff on. And uh, while you are up uh, gathering your stuff, uh, Jendel is um, taking advantage of some bread off the table. All right. Guys. Definitely we will be riding out. This. Riding? You guys don't own any horses. Okay. And that tells me what I'm leaving at home. Yeah. The horses are, are the uh, Sir Nevins. He actually has a number of horses, but those that's all his property. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys are guests in his manor. Mm-hmm. I'm just bringing my armor and arms. Yeah, I mean, you're only going to be gone a couple of minutes. It's it's he's just going to take you like two miles to the sign of this, to the oh. site of this battle. Yeah, I am bringing you know, my first aid bag though. Okay, might be good. Yep. Guy is dreaming that this will lead to a years-long crusade on our part, so he's going to bring all his equipment with him. He's I, ready to I, jump I, on a ship. I did spend a few weeks writing this down. No, I'm just... <laughs> all right. So, uh, is everybody ready? Yes. Yeah, we would, oh. we would armor up, I take it, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You guys mm-hmm. are... If there are bandits out there, you probably are going to have to um, deal with it, so... Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, on this map, you can see there is a uh, upper left-hand corner where it says Two Tian. Yep. Um, yep, that is the road that uh, he takes you on. You'll also notice that the river crosses the road. There is no bridge. You guys wade through the river. Bridges are kind of a passe. Okay, so so you go through there, and you head up, and two miles is not very far, but um, 
he's like, yeah, it's this way, it's this way. Um, all right, so uh, it doesn't take that long. Um, there's a grisly sight because, you know, you haven't really um, put someone to death, you know? You've done a lot of training, but uh, there are there are five bodies on the road. Any of them still alive? What's that? Are any of them still alive? They don't look like it from this from glancing at the site. Walking forward to check. Yeah, yeah. So, um, looking around, you don't see any. Uh, uh, nobody's breathing, you know, there, and there's lots of blood on the road and uh, on their garb and stuff like that. Um, if you wish, you can do a physician check on them. All right. If you ever want to do a skill, just ask me, like, say, can I, can I use physician? Is that a skill that we can actually use in this situation? You know? And if it is, right. then then I'll say, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, make a okay. position check. Anybody else would like? I sure. might as well. I want to, but I'm worried they were left in the road as some kind of bait, and I am watching the trees. Yeah. I will okay. Ask General. Make an awareness oh. check if you are looking into the trees. Look at that. Crits. What crits? Awareness. They look alive to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we got some crits. Okay, <laughs> so when you guys are looking over the bodies with your physician check, mm -hmm. you can see that two of them were killed by arrows, right? Because they got oh, this what? arrow sticking out of their back, right? And then uh, the other three were killed by large gashes, um, probably swords of some kind, right? That's that's what they kind of look like. It, it looks like they were they were definitely killed while they were standing. They were not executed, so they weren't mm -hmm. like you know surrendering or whatever. You could tell that they. It was like it was. You can almost tell that it was just slash slash or puncture and puncture. Uh, looking around into the uh, awareness test, um, you see some footprints uh, going off into the into the woods from okay. um, from the uh, from the uh, site. Now, because you've got a crit, I'm going to allow this. Uh, You didn't really look at that, so yeah. You didn't ask for this, so I'm not gonna give it to you. Okay. Yeah. So you see some, you see some footprints. The physician checks. You get your, you get some uh, results on how they were killed. Anything else? Yeah. Do we, do we recognize the travelers and ask uh, Jendal how many of these bandits he saw and if he recognized any of them as locals? Oh, they, they definitely weren't locals. I, I, I didn't recognize any of them. There was three, maybe more. I mean, I, I didn't get it. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I panicked. You know, but there was there wasn't many. Uh, I mean, you know, three maybe, maybe 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 four or five. But there there are five dead travelers, and you do if you if you kind of look around the travelers, um, <laughs> you this this probably should have been obvious. Um, I'm gonna allow this to yeah. This is definitely obvious. They're guildsmen, okay? So they, they all have a guild badge on their, uh, on their jackets. 
and I think it looks like a well you know it's the miners guild <clears throat> uh, these guys are obviously miners they're all under 18 <laughs> uh, just is there anything else besides the bodies Do they, are there weapons yes, yes. There's, they... there's this one obvious thing that I didn't tell you that's like so obvious you don't have to roll but I'll tell you in just a second okay Oh, the bandits are still standing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you guys are... Okay, so which one is it? It's the one in the bottom right. Yeah, it looks like a little weasel or whatever. The the blue and red with the little weasel. I think that's a weasel. I don't know what that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're all wearing that. And uh, you can tell that the, the robes have all been opened and I'm not sure he's making all that noise uh, but the robes have all been opened and they're uh, missing any money pouches or packs so it's just their uh, just them and their clothing no extra like tools no anything like that um, but the one of the guildsmen has a black boot sitting on his chest. Huh. When you arrive. He's just laying on the ground, black boot. Is that some kind of symbol symbolism or calling card that we may be familiar with? Um no. Maybe? No. Huh. Like one of these one of these bandits ran off without his boot. <laughs> Seems unlikely. Yeah, but this boot looks brand new. What's like it it's made been, out of it's leather. It's a leather boot, and it's been recently polished. Is right there? Something. Is there any like studs on the bottom? I know that was sometimes a thing. You put your little symbol. <laughs> studded nails yeah yeah you 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 pick up the boot and you look around no it just looks like a, just a boot. It, it looks like a boot for a baby oh, size a si size six. <laughs> oh, really huh. maybe well, maybe a maybe a gnome <laughs> i'm gonna guess that badge was was a bad uh, actually a badger Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, a badger. Okay. Well, let's keep that boot. Whoever uh, has I'll, it, I'll maybe. I'll carry it. Okay. We, maybe we can track it. Source down. Um, um. Can I try tracking skill to see if I can tell where these people may have gone? My tracking's not good, but I mean, it's worth a you, shot. You can. Someone. Someone. Uh, sees. Sees footprints. Oh. Okay. But he didn't say Probably anything. Obvious. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to remember who the tracker was, uh, character name wise. Was that Guimar? Guy. Guy. Yeah. guy? guy? Uh -huh. Hey, hey, guy. Hey, uh, guy. <laughs> guy, there's footprints through the trees. Can you follow them? I think so. Luckily, these are plainly obvious. Hopefully, we can follow them. And if I lose them, then then I can maybe make a we're checkers. looking we're looking for a man with one boot <laughs> that's right and a very small feet <laughs> and a very and very small small feet okay looking for a child uh, uh you all can make a tracking roll hmm. if you don't have the skill it's five percent i did it <laughs> Oh, with with critical success. Oh. Okay, so nobody else needs to roll. Um, Good. Yeah, and Jevin, Jevin says, man, I was supposed to help you with that. No, okay. <laughs> that's, I'm, yeah, the woods, yeah. I'm the woodsman here. No, that's fine. <laughs> you, I would suspect <laughs> he's good at it. Much yeah. Than so you, you've, you've uh, followed the trail uh, for another couple of miles through the woods. Um so it's still morning time. Um, 
definitely yeah. trying to keep our awareness up because we do know that they they have you know uh, ranged weaponry and that they could ambush us probably like they ambush these okay these. so here we go i need everyone to make a stealth check no i do have you know you got to hate it when a game master says make a stealth check no Got there a big penalty for our armor. <laughs> boy, oh, oh, I'm boy. sure. I'm sure you do. So, <laughs> you guys are like, crack, 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 crack. Okay, through the woods. And uh, everybody got a marginal failure. Um, oh, my goodness. Look at Guy. Target five. Yep. Yeah. So, um, the way stealth works, me mechanic wise, just so, you, just so you know in the future. A marginal failure is not as bad as you think. It just means they get an awareness test. Okay. Because they might fail it. If you had a critical failure, no test needed. They heard you coming. If uh, you got a critical success or even a marginal success, no roll needed. They didn't hear you coming. You guys wearing pots and pans? Is that what happened? <laughs> Yeah. 35. He did I mean, say he you know, all of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Sir, Sir Bernier almost made it. He was incredibly was close. close. Yeah. I was trying. Huh? No modifier? <laughs> Boom. What did I get? I don't know. Does it say? Yeah, failure. All right, so they don't hear you coming. Okay, so... Uh, We're not stealthy, but they're not very uh, attentive. Yeah, they're like, oh, check this out. Look at what we got. Okay, and uh, I'm going to switch you over to a new map. I think it's this one. I hope it's this one. Well, and it's black. Should be black. Yeah, mm. it should, should be black because I don't have your tokens on there individually yet. Man, it's dark out here. <laughs> well, that means it's uh, working. Derek? Yes. Um, is it possible to take five minutes before we get into our combat? Yeah, I need to absolutely. Check something downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody can take a five minute while I get this set up. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Apparently, I am the noisy. That's good to know for the future. <laughs> uh, by a lot. That looks good. Okay. Um, you guys should be able to see what you see on the screen. I hope. Yep. Okay. Wonder what this sounds like.
Is everyone back? I don't know. Here, things are gonna get real. Is there a special way to roll for a, a skill if you don't have it? I mean, is there a generic rolling? Um, I think you can just pick. Uh, I see what you're saying. Like, no, I don't. I don't think there is one. We just Maybe, roll a, a D100 and just figure it out. We you could. Can. You could make a skill called default and then just give it uh, an ML of five. And just That's set it off. To, just set it off to the side. That is a good idea. I'm putting mine in Shek uh, Pavar, since I'm not probably going to have that ever, anyways. Okay. Oh, you mean that call that category? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I almost got it! Look at that. That's right. <laughs> Okay, SPO so zero. <laughs> okay, so everyone, uh, if we're all here, make sure you select your token, and then on your character sheet, there's something called initiative. And then you, uh, let me see. Uh, yep, there you go. And it would be under your combat profile. It's called combat initiative. But you got to make sure you select your token first. Uh -huh. And it'll add you to the initiative order. Second. Whoa, I got. No, wait. What? What just happened? Could have swore. It would name it by the token. Oh, I didn't give the token a name. Okay, I'm gonna fix this real quick. Mitchell. Yeah, Bob. Bandit Bob. <laughs> It's good to know a 71 on a default is only marginal failure. Yeah, oh, and it changed automatically in a turn order. Nice. I didn't even have to re-roll. Okay, what about this guy? Combat initiative. There it is. Boop. Okay. Um, and everything is in order. I still need two more initiatives. Can on it. It only counts if you select your token. Yep. If you don't select your token, you don't get to keep it. <laughs> it shouldn't change. Your initiative is not a die roll. It's just a set number. Oh, so I don't roll it. I just... Oh, we do have a skill for it, though. That's yeah, you have something called combat initiative. You click it, and it'll just put the number in the tracker. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah, you're not testing for initiative. Yeah, your all right. Your turn order initiative. There, there we go. go. Perfect. Got one more to go. That would be I'm trying to remember names. Guy. Uh, I clicked it. What happened? What am I supposed to... I'm just clicking the die roll? No. So, near the bottom, uh, where you have the nice, colorful armor protection thing, to the left of that, you have a section called combat stats. And the very top line is combat initiative. Yep. I see. Thank you. I clicked the initiative skill instead, and I got a marginal success on it for what it's worth. <laughs> that's, that's good. Okay, now that... Uh, speaking of which... Because you are a human being playing a character, you will not almost never have to make an initiative skill roll. NPCs have to make an initiative skill roll every turn. Oh, if, nice. if they fail, they stand there and do nothing. 
that's absolutely wild. Right. So basically what it's saying is if you decide to stand there and do nothing, then that's fine. If you decide to run, that's fine. Yeah. So basically NPCs have this chart that I roll on. It's an initiative skill table chart. Okay, so everybody everybody should be on there. It's not in order. Let's get it in order. What is going on with my turn? This is brand new. I don't even see. Ah, okay. Looks like it's changed. They updated the oh, order. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um so so Reynard, you're gonna be first. Now this is our first combat together, so I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And then as we progress and we adventure together and go on other quests, it'll all become second nature. But uh, I'm going to pop a table to you. It's called the wrong table. I clicked the healing table. Got it. Okay. You should have this one pop up. It should say combat tables on it. And... You don't need to look at all those numbers. That is really for me to look at. The only thing I'm going to ask you to look at is the second page there that shows action options. Do you guys see it? Oh, okay. I know this one. Yeah. So, <clears throat> when you, when you, when it's your turn, you choose an action option. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> A free move uh, is is a move anywhere that's not in an engagement range of an enemy. Uh, engage means you can only move half speed and enter someone's engagement range. A charge means you can move your full move and still enter someone's engagement range. So, I don't know why you wouldn't always charge, but hey, you know, whatever. Um, and disengage is you get to move one hex or one hex away from your opponent. And if at that point you are out of his engagement range, <clears throat> you get half of your movement left. A grope is not what you might think. It is manipulating something on your body with your hands. Um... And you know what melee attack, missile attack is, and all that good. Now, esoteric... Okay, I'm about to cough. Had to make an announcement. Esoteric is probably not anything you guys are going to be doing. It is what uh, that necromancer does when he's summoning the undead. He does an esoteric. He casts a spell. Or a cleric that might, you know, bring down the force of heaven... That is an esoteric style attack. Or psionics, right? If I don't know if they exist in this world. I'm glad you don't know that. <laughs> All right, Sir Reynard. Let's get this <laughs> let's get this show started. So as an action I can move or draw a weapon. I assume I, I, I'm I'm assuming you have your sword and shield already out. I was thinking mace. Okay, or mace and shield is already I'm out. I'm a little better with it. But if you wanted to now uh, draw a weapon, uh, any, anything that's reasonably done in the matter of one second, you can do. Okay. Um, and then what, is, what was our full movement again? How many hexes? It's on your it's on your character sheet. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's in the combat skills where the initiative oh. uh, clock is. Yep. Exactly. Yep. You got to move in hexes, uh, right? Okay. And uh, a move is not how far you can move. That's your move step. <laughs> you can you can walk half that distance. You can trot. The full distance, you can run double the distance, or you can sprint three times the distance hmm. with a free move. But you can get tired, so remember, you can get tired. What's a charge considered? 
Uh, 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 not uh, it's it's double move, not three. So it's okay. a it's a run, a control <laughs> run, basically. It's a run, right? Then and I, a charge also includes a melee attack. Oh. So you can move double and attack. Is there what's the downside to charging? I mean, isn't there's the downside is, there, is you now you're in range. Okay. There's <laughs> not a defensive penalty for charging. No, it's that's why I say there, there's no reason not to charge. Okay, so I have <clears throat> movement, but you can't attack. charge if you can't reach the enemy. Mm. I have movement of eight hex. I'm going to charge bandit two. Right, so that gives you a sixteen move. Yes. And it takes me 15 to get up to him. Boom. So, Yeah, that's bang. fine. Yeah, absolutely correct. So now, now, you now you're, I... you're engaged. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so and, and now you get to uh, choose whether you're going to uh, <clears throat> attack high or low. And whether or not, or middle. And if like you're, middle. and then, if, okay, if you do not, if you do not say anything, if you just say I'm going to attack, you, mm -hmm. it defaults to middle and the most damaging aspect of your weapon. Okay. So you don't have to say, I'm going to poke him or I'm going to slash him or whatever. It's just going to be default, the biggest uh, number on your weapon. Okay. Well, I'm swinging for the chest with the end of my mace, the business end. Okay. He did not know that you were coming, right? You, you sprang out from the, the bushes. Uh, you guys got the jump on him. He ignores you. Oh, boy. I'm not good to be him. No. Oh. <laughs> So you make your attack roll. Yes. I don't know if you've already done it. No, you haven't done it. Uh, no. Um, there's man, many, there's many lines. Be upon the... Are you using, oh, a no. bro you're using a mace, right? Yeah. With a mace. Wow. So you should have wow. rolled a 111 or less. You had a penalty of 30 for what reason? Weight and everything probably. Yeah. And so your target <clears throat> became an 81 and you rolled a 99. I almost can't miss, and I missed. Okay, so <laughs> with a... That's only marginal failure. On, well, there you go. on an ignore roll, that means you hit him. Oh, okay. Right? So you, <laughs> you roll 1d6. You hit him in the thorax. Okay, okay. I've, I've got the hit locations already macroed out, so I'm just going to macro them so, uh, to make it super easy because I got low, mid, and high locations already macroed. So that's a, okay. that's a thorax. So you hit him in the chest. 1d6 and, and add it to your aspect oh. of your mace. 1d6 added to the aspect of my mace, which would be the attack stat? Just roll a d6. Okay. <laughs> um... How come it doesn't show your damage with your mace? It it says attack fifteen, defense five. Is that it? Did you or, not fill out your oh, character one, sheet? Once I did, I did. Is it the blunt six? Yes, that should have okay. popped up on your attack. Oh, well, I didn't. I didn't click the button. I rolled a d six. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. When you oh, rolled that. your attack, it should have said... Hmm. That's okay. All right. It shouldn't be a change. It's filled out. But it, okay, I'll double check it. So it's a, it's a six. Yes. And you're hitting the bandit mercenary in the thorax. He has one point of armor there. So your total is nine. Yes. Minus one is eight. So your effectiveness is five plus. In the thorax, S two. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. Okay. So he uh, didn't hit enter. 
think I think I just made that man a paraplegic. <laughs> Maybe. Um serious injury S2 Okay, yes, roll two dice versus in his endurance. Why don't I just keep this open? Ah, yeah. The, I think the character sheets have changed. I'm going to have to look at this. Well, I have... What's this button do? Okay, he doesn't. he doesn't die. Which is always good, right? Well, no, <laughs> no, right. right. Okay, so Sir Cal is actually next. Now, can I bypass the one he's already engaged with, or do I have to stop at that one for a charge? If you, if your movement brings you within one square of one hex of the one he's engaged with, you have to stop. Okay, I found it. There's two buttons that will roll an attack. One of them has the stats pop up on the bottom. Okay. And that's the one in between the HM column and... The no, that's with the hand columns. penalty. Oh, is it? Yeah, it oh, says no. that's with the hand oh, yeah. modifier. It says so use this button to roll a normal attack when I mouse over it. Yeah, that's okay. the one you want to use. That's the one I used the first time, but it didn't have the damage show up. I wonder why. the penalty did. Okay. But it's either way. All right. It's either way. It's on yeah. your character sheet. Yeah, you can, as long as you... What's your movement speed? Uh, 11. So uh, 22, which is more... Which is enough <laughs> to get me to the archer. Yeah, if you want to do like a... One hex. Yeah, you just got to... Guess got to be... Got to be at least one hex away from the opponent and not enter in his his engagement range. Stay to here, that hex. Okay. And be out of the guy's engagement range by just doing kind of an arc. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, and now for the attack with the broadsword. All right, use this potion for attack roll. Not with hand mitt penalty, the one without. It should be on the right. So what is the hand penalty? Yeah, two-handed weapons that are used one-handed. Oh, okay, okay. Like right. bastard Let's see swords. If that works. Yeah. Submit. There's no modifier. All right. Okay. With a broadsword, looks like you got a marginal yep. success. Um, yep. You hit him in the knee. Ooh. <laughs> Used to be an adventurer. That's right. <laughs> oh, that target number. <laughs> um. And now, where's the damage oh, on? Yeah, it? he's also ignoring. Um. Yeah, the damage is at the bottom. If you right up where it says marginal success, right below that, you oh. see B three, E five, P three. Okay, so with an edge five, uh, yeah. Yeah. you're you're gonna add five to a number of dice. I gotta see how many it is. With a marginal success, that's gonna be that's marginal failure. With a marginal success, it's three dice. It's three dice oh. plus five. Oh, shoot. So, 16 edge. To the knee. Right, 16. On the archer. He has one point of armor on his knee. So, so instead of 16, it's 15, which is a 13 plus. 13 plus on the knee is a grievous injury. Uh, and it's level four. I, th I think you just amputated his leg. Well, we're about to find out. He's the guy that left the boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's out of the, he's out of action. Uh, yeah. But let's see here. Knee. Uh... Okay, it's not an amputation, but it is a stumble roll. He stumbles as he falls over dead. <laughs> so he's out it's not an amputation but it was close I, I'm just asking Derek is he 
actually dead or just in shock? He's in shock. I just for my own clarification. Technically, so he's excited. technically officially he's in shock. Okay. Which means he'll so be out for he he'll be out until he dies. In other words, I just need to make certain if I'm dragging his ass back for them to hang him. Right. Well, you don't even need you don't even need to do that. You would just kill him. <laughs> Let the wolves have him. Yeah. Or or maybe not. You might you might take him back as a as a as a uh, prisoner or something. That's possible. You would have to perform some kind of uh, first aid on him to prevent him from dying on the way back. Okay. Uh, Cal, that was your turn. Okay, yep. Bernier. Uh, I'm just These guys aren't moves. doing good ignoring you. Set up a charge for next turn and stay out of the way. Okay. So, it's so a free move. Yeah, free move. Yeah. So you move up, um, making ready. Got it. We're trotting to get into charge range, but yeah. I can't reach anybody this turn. So, so guy, sir, guy. So a charge is only double my hex move, right? Correct. And your hex move is probably. A, a number around seven, six, seven, eight, something like that. It's only five. Five, okay. So you're carrying a little extra. Yeah. So I'm. I'm only. I can just double move. You can I'm triple just... move if you want. Um, I'm going to. Sh I'll just move this far because then I could charge next turn. But I'm right. Is it okay if I were to to yell at him to surrender now? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll I'll do that. Okay. Um, obviously, he sees his comrades. Surrender not, now, like, or die, or face death. I, okay. Because I would, I would like to know if he's been put up to this by somebody, or if he's this is just their own stupid plan. Because he did attack guild members, and he left a calling sign, which is unusual. Okay. Make make a uh, make a rhetoric roll. Not my strongest suit, but hey, okay, I did it. Okay, so <laughs> he hears you. He understands what you're saying. Okay, I put it out clearly enough to be understood. Absolutely. Doesn't know. Doesn't mean he'll comply, but and that that I guess will be the end of my turn. That's right. And then so bandit. I'm just going to use the same one. They have the same stats. So, okay, that's going to make me look it up. There are certain things I probably have to learn to keep up on my screen so I don't have to constantly look for them. But I'll, fig I'll figure that out as we go. I really wish they had an index too. That would help. Okay, here we are. Engagement, actions. after missiles here it is okay 
It's not a critical failure. It's marginal failure. He's cautious and passes. Wow, that sucks. Okay, so we go to the other mercenary. Well, he's cautious because he hears this guy saying, if you don't surrender, he's going to die. So that, that would explain a little bit. So, <laughs> so the next guy uh, rolls his initiative. Oh, critical failure. Oh, okay. Boy. So that is a D100 roll to see what he does. Okay. He goes berserk. Freaking out. Okay, so the one up here, the, the one that's flashing, he goes berserk. Uh, it's a special state. He has to be aggressive. He gets to add 20 to his attacks. He ignores initiative rolls. Okay, so he's in the fight for long haul. Um, okay, so he's going to... Um, it's pretty much the exact opposite of surrender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surrender like... or die. No! Ah! Okay, so he charges Reynard. Uh, now, because you have two people beside you, you're considered outnumbered. Okay. So, uh, what that means is... I, I don't like that. <laughs> no. Right. So, what outnumbered um, the means is you get a minus on defense. Not what attacks. What of minus? Yeah, it's a... Uh, outnumbered. But you still do get an action every time you're attacked, so if maybe I read the rules correctly. <laughs> if I read it correctly, yeah. Um, ten for each person above one. Okay, so it's minus ten. So if you do a block or a dodge, you get minus ten. So that would be oh. that would be one of those modifiers when that box pops up. You just type okay. in minus ten right there. And this guy, um, bandit mercenary, one. one berserk. He gets a plus twenty. He is using a falchion oh. and a round shield. So, with his falchion... He stole that falchion, I'm sure of it. He's got to be a soldier or something. This, this isn't typical for, I don't think, regular... Miners usually carry him. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't... I'm sorry. I didn't allow you to decide what you were going to do. Oh, I was going I to... I jumped the gun. Block. Okay, so go ahead and make a block roll. Minus 10. Minus 10. Okay. Good job. So, uh, marginal success against a marginal success is a block. Good job. <laughs> Reynard standing his ground. That's right. So you, boop, get off me. Okay, no damage. Nothing. Okay, let me mark this guy with some kind of berserk. Okay. It's a new round. They're not going to ignore you. Oh, um, you get no penalty for attacking. Well, then I'm Only going defending. after... Okay. Then I'm going after... This crazed man who is uninjured. He seems more of a threat. Right. Um, if you hover over him, does it say one and two? Yes. Okay. I'm going after one. One, okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to oh, counter strike. Oh, hey, look, it popped up this time. 
Yeah, I know. That's what I was wondering. Oh, maybe why... because it was a failure last time. Ah, uh, <clears throat> maybe so. Yeah, that, that could be. Because usually a failure is no damage. Yeah. Okay, so you did a... Uh, I'm doing Counter-Strike. Uh, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I should just keep this character sheet open. He is not wounded. Okay. Oh, marginal failure. <laughs> okay, so marginal success against a marginal failure is A2. Okay, so he's going to get a wound level 2. Um, no, that's not true. That's a, that's a lie. Okay, I'm jumping the gun. It's two dice plus your weapon's damage. Okay. Against his neck. Oh, no. So, 14. Okay. 14. He has zero armor on his neck. So, 14 K4. winds up being a 13 or better. Is it a K4? It is a K4. Yeah. Okay, so that's not good. It's a kill or a mortal wound. Okay, so it's four. That wait, K five at seventeen plus. I could take off his head with a mace. <laughs> Crush I it. Almost did. I think you you crack his skull wide open. This this may be a good time to point out for those who weren't there for my character creation. I ended up with a nineteen for my strength. He's <laughs> out. I didn't put yeah. any points in it. Even though he's berserk, he's out. All right. I put him to sleep. Yeah, we'll just go. <laughs> and I point, I point the, the bloodied mace at the first guy I hit, and I say, you heard the man. Surrender or die. Well, now you're not outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cal. All right. <clears throat> Try to take him alive. He should have blocked. I mean, he has a shield. No, he, he, <laughs> he decided to counter-strike, and that's what he gets. All right. Um, I can get to there. Mm -hmm. Now, he's outnumbered. He is, so his defense is minus 10 for every person over one. Um... Oh, I can, yeah, close, uh... I can close the archer. He's gone. Okay. Yeah. Just a second here. We're going to... I'm going to try and pummel him. You're going to oh. strike him with an unarmed strike? Uh, a a well, punch? The... No. Pommel, literally, of the sword. Okay, so you're going to you're gonna use the... You're going to use the, the blunt? Yep. Aspect of the sword. Okay. Yeah, you can you can do that. You can blunt him. All right. And um, going high. Oh, you're going to swing high. Okay. Well, he's yeah. going to try to block you with his shield. He right. he learn not to counter strike. He's not berserk. <laughs> oh, marginal failure. Okay, let's see what a round shield blocking minus 10. Oh, yeah, minus 10. Admit, I got a marginal failure as well. Okay, so... It's a... You also hit him in the neck. Ooh. And marginal failure, marginal failure is a block. So he blocked it. Okay. Yeah, you both failed. So, you know, nothing, nothing drastic. Okay, Bernie. Bernie. Um, can I use the the pommel of the broadsword just charge him and knock him in the head? Absolutely. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, you're using the blunt edge 
the blunt mm -hmm. aspect of your weapon. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. He's going to try to block you. Now he's got a minus 20. Okay, so I just do broadsword normally. Is that what you do? It is, yeah. And I use the yeah. the the one that, that says use this for the normal attack, right? Yeah, the AML. That's correct. Yeah, and is there any uh, modifiers for me, no? No modifier. Boy, I roll high in this game. You got a marginal <clears throat> failure, uh, and let's see what my round shield block minus 20 is. Whoops, that's minus 10. Oh, critical failure. He, he didn't see you coming. He might have gotten him. And you, short. He's now, looking right over the top of my helmet. Now, it's because you didn't mention you were going high or low. Oh, yeah. Or oh, no, mid. I said I was going to hit him right in the head. Yeah, but that... That you can't call a hit location, but we'll say you said high. I'm sorry. High is good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. High is good. So you hit him in the face. Ooh. Yeah. So that's that's his head. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> so, yeah, hit him in the face. Hmm. Uh, his armor in his face is zero, and uh, oh, where's my where'd my where'd my chart go? Combat table. There it is. You did a marginal failure versus a critical failure is DF. Okay, let's see what we got here. DF. Dysfunctional. No. Uh, fumble roll. Okay. Well, knock his hat off? No, he he's blocking with his <laughs> shield. So. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> So he he went to block his face, and he probably th could have thrown it or something. Yep. I don't know. Let's see yep. what we get. Yep, his shield is gone. Okay, so he went to block. He failed. You smacked him in the face, but it didn't do any. It didn't do any damage. Okay. Right, maybe yeah. I'll get a chance to, to do something here. Yeah, because the DF is not uh, uh, an mm -hmm. attack does damage. Okay, so guy, I am charging in. Okay, you should have. And a... I okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna attack with the flat of my blade high on his head. Okay, he's also gonna try to block. He's he 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 seems like he's a little fanatical. Good lord. And he gets a... Uh-oh. But he gets a minus 30. Oh, wait! He doesn't have a shield! Okay, blocks with his falchion. Minus 30. I, I don't think he's going to make that block. Oh! Okay. And you said high as well, right? Yeah. Okay, that's... Unfortunately, that's an elbow. His shield arm was... Well, was up and throw, throwing his shield and... <laughs> got him in the elbow. Let's see what we got here. We got an attacker with a critical failure. A defender with a critical failure is BF. He's your best friend. Both. Oh, you, okay, so you both have to make a fumble roll. So if you look on your character sheet, in your injuries, it should say fumble. I think I fumbled. Yep, failure dropped your sword. Uh, he makes the fumble roll and drops his sword. <laughs> hey, oh. I disarmed him, guys. <laughs> you, did, you did. Well, you hit him in the elbow and it knocked it out, <laughs> and, but but it, it it rattled your hand in the process of doing it. Uh, okay, so yeah, he's disarmed. Um, no shield, no sword. Surrounded. And and now it's his turn. Uh, I'm not going to make an initiative roll. Because I'm just going to say he gives up. I surrender. <laughs> I quit. I quit. Don't kill me. Good. Good. <laughs> can, I, can I do what I was going to do anyways? What are you going to do? On your tackle turn, him. you're going to take an action? I was going to tackle him. I was going to make a <laughs> grapple attack. Well, it's there pretty you know. easy when he's not resisting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I did bring some rope, gentlemen. Yeah, so we're we going to remove up. all turns. I left mine at home. We're going to clear that. You guys didn't get one injury. Well, yeah, we're nice. It didn't. 
That's true. <laughs> but yeah, you do have you do have a couple of gurgling uh, bandits on the ground. You know, uh, one was hitting his knee and it hurt so bad that he passed out, and the other guy got hit in the chest and he got knocked out. And then this guy, I don't think he's injured, but he's surrendering because he has no weapons. Are the other two dead? They're dying. They, they're in shock. They're can in shock. To, can we try to well, I, stop the bleeding? Their necks. If you no. want to. No, we have one alive for information. Yeah. I'm going to put the Let's, archer out of <laughs> misery. I mean, Let's if you want, if you, I mean, if it was Sir Nevin, oh. all three would be dead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Assuming it would be like, I don't care. <laughs> But yeah, we, we but just there might be a there might be a bigger picture here because they all have boots on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not gonna leave the the archer to bleed to death death in the wilderness. I'm gonna put him out of his misery. Right. Let's pat them down for any sort. If and the they wood, are on a mission. the woodward did follow you, so he'll help you carry the bodies. If you Good. want, he'll carry all the bodies because, you know, he obeys. Could, could you yeah, run back to town lot. and grab like a wheelbarrow? We got a lot of bodies. No, I'm strong. He just, just grabs strong. one foot and, uh, each and just drags them through the woods. Or, right, or we'll right. make this guy carry one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically check the area, make certain we aren't missing anything that's lying around. Yeah, and these guys don't deserve to be buried anyway. They're bandits. They don't... It, well, first of all, you don't know that they're bandits. You just came up on them and charged them and killed them. They could be assassins. They could be mercenaries. They could be survivors from the... Yeah, they could have been miners. <laughs> the miners. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. But they had... they. Two of them had falchions, and one does have a bow. And they yeah. did have footprints leading from the Can bodies. We, would it be socially acceptable to keep their weapons for us as like a spoils of war, or is that something that that belongs to the to the landholder? Like that's, we give it to our that's father. open. That is open to interpretation. We take it all back and let yeah, definitely take it aside what we get. Yeah, you can. I wouldn't mind having a bow at some point. You probably would not have any problems from anybody if you kept the bow. What happened to the stuff they took from the miners? Okay, so you're, right so you're going to check out their their booty? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to directly <clears throat> ask the living one that question. Yeah, you you find you, you do find a satchel that they were preparing to look through. It's really heavy. I bet it's full of rocks. It or. is full of iron ore. <laughs> yeah. It's it's full of iron ore and 176 silver. Oh, nice. Coins. <laughs> Not ore. Yeah, it's mostly iron ore, but there are some coins at the bottom of the bag. Right. Uh, there's also a note. What does it say? Um, it actually, is it sealed? It is not is sealed. It, it is folded. Uh, and it's on, it's on one of the mercenaries. It wasn't in the satchel. Okay, what does the note say? The note says... Oh, no. I can only read one language. It is in common. No, it's in Laurent, <laughs> uh, Le Keys. Okay. Um, I actually have the alphabet for Le Keys, and it looks a lot like Arabic. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so where... Uh, I know it's weird looking. Uh, messages and notes? That would be it. Um, this is it. I want to change the name of the title, but that's okay. Ooh, there you go. 
We did good, kept, kept capturing one alive. What does it say? Uh, Men of the Black Boot. Have we heard of this Sir Mayo before? No. Um. No, I don't think so. Where is Free Tall? I'm sure it's somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm thinking, though, <laughs> is it common that somebody would be of some place, but not necessarily that's where they're at now, right? It's usually it's not a place. They... That's the name of a person, like Mayald Son oh. or Freetal Son. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so he's Mayald of Freetal. We found the oh. Frito. We found the Frito Bandito. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey, that's a, I didn't name him. <laughs> and, and he. <laughs> Is claiming some kind of nobility. Yes, sir. Which is this? I don't know if you would even. This could be considered a, an act of war. He's sending Unless his men to attack our men or the people on our land. Uh, that doesn't jive well. It shouldn't. Is there a miners guild or a representative of that miners guild in in uh, Roganter? Uh, no, but you can ask about it. You don't know. You you have like a blacksmith and a there. There's the my, There's the mill, but n no guild uh, is set up in town. And they were apparently, well, according to this note, traveling to Roganter specifically. Yeah, I wonder if they were expected or if this was an unannounced visit. But we, we will find out. Yeah, sounds like they were called upon if they're traveling to do a survey. I mean, they'd have to have Sir Neville's permission. So that right, this is a note that I right what? like right now it's in messages and notes under handouts. If you ever want to pull it back up and look at. It's really, it's really nice to offer 100% finder's fee. <laughs> it's so kind of you to say, rob somebody, you can keep their stuff. Interesting. <laughs> Which means this is probably an enemy of our father. They're not well, worried about well, getting the loot from you, them. They're just trying to mess up the mine. If you, yeah. you said you had this guy tied up, you know, he's, he's a wealth of information. Yeah. If you want to, like, put the screws to him, or you can take him I back. Was, I wasn't sure if it was our place, or if it would be Sir Neville's place to question him, kind of. You know, I'm trying to, to think of this mindset. I mean, well, I'm obviously my own person, and I can ask questions, but... Over the, over the years, Sir Neville has asked you to do things to see what you would do. Okay. So also he's currently sick and not in the condition for an interrogation whereas we have this guy in the middle of nowhere with no one around to hear him scream. We we do we should find well, out if there are not more really men. That, but... <laughs> so we, you know we should find out if there are more of these <sighs> black boot people skulking about and we just got a, a small portion of them. I'll ask Jindal if he knows of any mining going on in the woods around. If he's seen any of these guys digging and looking, you know, surveying. No. Um, this is news to me. Um, is it significant that they're carrying ore with them? Are they really carrying ore, iron ore? Well, you look at it, it looks like black rock. I mean, it's it looks like iron. Iron ore. Well, they were looking for a new mine. They found ore. It's clearly to show the viability. You're not an alchemist. Yeah, but they're 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 mem they were members of the miners guild, and this satchel looks like it's iron ore. It, 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 it looks mind. in various it, the the mm -hmm. iron ore looks various uh, states of of um, like purity and stuff like that it looks like it's a, a variety of ore and dirt types because the ore is probably mixed with a little bit of 
dirt and some might be green, uh, not green, like brown and orange and yellow type dirt. So it looks like a bunch of different types of samples. Yeah, this could be an, a, a sample he's bringing to Sir Neville to show him this is what we're looking for. It I, doesn't necessarily I, I, mean he found it. So. I don't buy that. I don't think Sir Neville knows anything about this. The guild sent these guys out to look for a new mine. To, I don't know. You'd take it to Sir Neville and say, look at our ore? Well, he could be, like I said, he could be saying this, these are the types of things we will be looking for and show it to Sir Neville. Okay. It's a possibility. I don't know, though. Like you're okay. Right. There's, yeah, there's, there's, something go, there's something going on here, and we definitely don't have the full scope of what's That's why I asked if there was a guild member in in right. uh, town. I, I thought that these guys were headed there. So that. Yeah, that, I don't okay. know. I don't know if if this would be common knowledge to you guys but since your mind is going in this direction i'm gonna let it i'm gonna share it neville distrusts all guilds oh ne yeah, yeah i'm neville. sure that would have come up at dinner sometime yeah he he doesn't want it's like he's a businessman and he doesn't want a union right he's got he doesn't want someone organizing okay He's against it. So. So there are no other he, guilds in town. Could he run his own mine without the guild being involved in this society, or is that? Yes, he could. Okay. Uh, he, he couldn't sell it. I mean, he, it would be it would be hard for him to, or he wouldn't get the same kind of prices, or, you know, they, uh, people that would buy the ore probably are like members of the guild, and they would be told not to. Uh, do business with him or whatever. So there might be, but that, but he doesn't do business with or or he, there's no mines in in your manor as far as you know. Derek, is there a place in town that somebody traveling like these gentlemen would be going to, to into town with their their or just to spend the night? There is no inn. There's no inn. I have a concern. There is a t there is a there is a temple, which I'm sure would put them right. up, and there's a manor. Yeah, yeah. And there's people's houses. Maybe they could rent a room or something right, from in right. somebody's house. But there, there's no inn, right. no tavern. We don't know even if there these miners were heading to town. Well, the note says they were. Well, the note says the that note there says is a group going there. Oh, that they're heading and, through this area. Well, they want to have a. They're looking to see if there's mining in the area, but the manor, the the town, the the term Ragantar would be the whole area of the holding. Right. Mm -hmm. Visiting Ragantar would be anywhere out here that's within the Lord's domain, uh, or the or domain or common ground. Even. Right, which is at least two miles into the woods. Yeah. So they're at Ragantar right now, is what I say. I right, think. right. Well, after tracking they, them, you tracked were. them further away, uh, like northeast. You went into like a northeast direction. Here, let me let me switch you back to a uh, a world map. So, if I was to zoom in, <laughs> maybe shrink this uh, pin. Okay, let's get a zoom. There we go. Move that pen. I'm going to draw on my map, my beautiful map. So you got, where's Roganter? There we go. Okay. So that's about where you're at. If you can see my little artwork. Yes. You went a couple of miles up the road towards Lemus and then off the road through the woods following the river towards Avocar. And just oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it not not to 
lay evils on our amazing father, but is it possible he's involved in this? Involved in what? In targeting these guild members. Because if they were to find a viable mine within his territory, they may just petition someone higher than him to give them I, mining rights and force their way in where he doesn't want them. I think he would have found a convenient way for us not to be around when this happened. Possible. If he wouldn't tell us to jump at it and go kill these guys, I don't think. We should, we should ask this guy who uh, who the Black Boots are and stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's right. uh, it's surprising. I can't remember how this fight turned out. Did did we kill all three of them, or did one manage to run away? And I give him a meaningful look. And he says, I think one escaped. Oh. <laughs> Got away. Well, then I suppose. Without any injuries. I well, suppose he's... you need to tell us enough information to keep us busy while you run. So start talking. <laughs> um, okay, make a rhetoric, rhetoric roll. This is in defense to his blabbering. Okay. It's not it's not being like you're not intimidating him. You're just trying to understand what he's saying. I told him to talk and he's saying everything. And he yeah, he's just spilling his guts. He doesn't want to die. I'm just a bandit, man. I was just hired to get some gold oh, and no. some silver and I don't know anything about what's going on <laughs> and Okay. I failed. Did you fail okay let me get to the character. critically okay so this is what even though with a critical failure you figure it out this everyone else can basically hear this as well he's a member of a larger bandit company called the black boots okay these guys all work for this disgruntled knight there's, there's this knight that feels like he was slighted in some way in this area and is getting revenge, right? But in the process of that, he's hired a bunch of local narrow dwells, some thugs, to help him. And they're... Um, Their camp, they don't, they're like, think of them like, he, he describes them as the merry men. We steal from the rich and give to the poor and, and we, uh, we're the, we're the, we have a knight in our, in our midst, you know, Sir, uh, Sir Robin Hood, whatever. He's, he's. Uh. He, he doesn't like the local nobility. He thinks that they're uh, oppressive and, and they punish people. So we go out and kill innocents. So you get the, you get the impression like if, if Robin Hood and his merry men were bad guys. Who says they weren't? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and he feels like he he was the the church took his keep away from him and all that stuff but they oh, have no. they they have uh they have a um they have a uh, <clears throat> a camp in the woods but uh it's well hidden and sometimes they move it around so they're not always in the same spot and northeast of here um but it's not a they they might have like a dozen, maybe maybe twenty people in their band. Well, now it's eighteen. <laughs> where 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 is the Black Boot Gang headquarters? 
at exactly? How far from here? I can't give you that because they move and uh, I don't know where here is. But he he does like, uh, you don't have a map to show him, but he does say it's probably, um, now the Game Master is looking at the map to see. So, uh, so it's I probably about, it's probably about 20 miles northeast of here. So I have a map, but it's in my backpack at home. Right. <laughs> so you get you get a general idea that uh, if you guys are generally in this area, he's saying that it's probably somewhere up here. On the other side of the uh, where all the iron mines are at. There's an iron mine there and there and there. It's on the other side. I see. But our our um, instructions was to uh, stop the meeting from the the miners guild and Sir Nevin. Uh, and we got to keep, you know, keep what you kill. That kind of stuff. See. So it's not, it, it's, not, it's not like... I don't know, I, I don't know what uh, our knight's motivation is. Like, um, I just know that he's got some kind of beef with the, with the nobility in the area. <clears throat> and he tells you all about his children, his, his the, all the different families he's supporting, and, you know, how down on his luck he is. And that's why you got a critical failure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because he's just, he's just telling you all his bad news. Man, dude, you gotta let me go. I got... I got five wives and 15 kids I'm trying to raise. You want me to be a good father, don't you? I know, right? <laughs> I know my response to this. I'm trying to think of Raynard's. Hmm. I, I promise, I, promise I won't, I won't, I won't kill any of your family or I won't kill anybody you know I promise <laughs> I'm a man of my word and I will spare you uh, for the crime of fighting us unfortunately this brings us to the matter of the five murders mm. well they had it coming to them they were walking on the road if, if we let him go <laughs> Sir Nevin's gonna be really mad oh yes absolutely um I look around at my brother. My, it's my intelligence eight going to town. That's right. <laughs> hey, I, I, I look around. At Use my what three you got. Brothers. <clears throat> it's uh, it's a shame that third one ran away. Luckily, he died of his injuries before he got far. <clears throat> and I lift my mace. Uh, and that's rough. A mace. He's like, no, no. Say. Well, he doesn't do that because he's tied up. No, no, <laughs> no. We take him back to Sir Nevin. He's the one that dispenses justice here. Very well. And drag them all back and all the stuff. Perhaps there's something we missed and the father will know. Exactly. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, you guys can find your way back. The woodsman is going to, um, take these other two bodies and dispose of them. So you guys don't have to worry about any of that. And then he can go back. Um, 
that's the woodsman's job. He's supposed to be in the woods, cleaning it up, getting rid of carcasses and stuff like that. That's, that's what he does. Um, so you guys go, uh, it takes a little bit longer and we, we get created ding. roadkill. You created roadkill. So, uh, <laughs> you get, um, get back to the keep. It's a little bit, it's, it takes longer to get back than it did to get out there because now you got this dead weight. Um, even though he's walking, he's not walking like with a hurry and you guys, um, get back to, get back to the keep. Sir Nevin is actually, um, when you guys start approaching, one of his guards makes an announcement that you've returned and he comes out of the main keep, uh, which manor house. And he's standing in the little courtyard, the little area inside the manor and he's standing there. Um, his son is standing next to him as you bring this bendito in. The other two resisted. They don't. He doesn't say anything. He just he waits for you guys to approach, and he he says, "So, what have you brought me?" Bandit father. The other two with him resisted. Skullduggery. So what, um... What, what happened? What did we yeah, do with we, the three miners? There's five miners? Oh, the five miners. Yeah. Uh, they're laying on the road. Um, yep. Yes, so we uh... Looted, turned over, yeah. searched. <laughs> Jendal was going to... Yeah, he's going to take, take care, care of all of them. that. Yeah, he's going to take care of all that. We... He might come into town and and enlist some other help, but yeah, he's gonna, he's got that under control. Who's got the the note? One of you. I haven't. I can't read. I wouldn't even take it. Oh, I was gonna say I, you I can't read. It. This one had a note. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, Dude, I, I, I rolled all right. twos on everything I tried to for my abilities. <laughs> Seems uh, uh, some man and his gang attacked a, a group of the Miners Guild traveling to Roganter and uh, Miners Guild. Wait, so there was Miners Guild on the road coming to Roganter, and they were besieged by bandits. Yes, yes, under the orders of a Sir Mailed. Sir Mailed of Freital. Freetal. That name doesn't sound familiar. Do you hand him the note? Yep. Okay. He looks at it and he's, he sees the the logo and he also, uh, he kind of re reads it and he says, I've heard of the Black Boot. Um, I didn't think they came this far south. It's basically a they're highwaymen or thugs that raid people on the on the on the road. Um, it doesn't well, seem like you would have business with these with the miners guild, uh, would you? But they they were carrying a bag of ore and some and some trams, but they may have been passing through. That part we don't know because there's no survivors on the miners guild side. Well, this scum here uh, claimed they the purpose was to interrupt a meeting with you. Um, I had gotten a letter from the Miners Guild okay. that said that they were going to or wanted to um, search in my land for potential mine locations um, and I knew they were coming I didn't know when uh, but my plan was to tell them to that um, I'm not open for business I don't want my forests destroyed with a mine I don't want that kind of uh, I don't want that kind of, um, 
I don't want my land destroyed by 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 a miner's guild. So I was going to turn them away. But that doesn't justify them getting killed. We'll just have to be more vigilant. And maybe uh, we'll have to report to the authorities in this area that this, is ha this had happened. What about striking back at the Sir Mayald? Um, is that something you think if, is necessary? If, if, if they... It, um, you mean like travel to a neighboring shire and take care of their business? Well, he sent his men onto your land and ordered them to kill these these guildmen who were theoretically under your protection they you didn't know they were here but they would probably have assumed that these were safe roads which they typically are and he's this can only reflect poorly hmm. on roganter now people will begin to say we have bandits everywhere and it's not safe i'm just speculating yeah. Um. Although there is only us to know about it at this point, and the men who collected the bodies of the miners' guilds, men. Right. Um. I don't. I. Th mm. I don't want to overstep my bounds and start hunting down bandits. Uh, if they were in my land, absolutely. But I'm not going into a neighboring manor or a neighboring city or shire to hunt down bandits that might be held up in their area. Um, if they were contracted or hired or persuaded by those uh, fiefdoms, you know, those lords in those areas, and they were sending them here, that would be a problem. That would be that would be something that I would have to deal with. But banditry um, outside of my land is kind of like think of it like out of my jurisdiction i don't think i can send you as representatives of me like over the border and to go attack but some some bandits are we representatives of you now well we... you're my family yes um, are you my are... representatives no but that's that's what i'm saying i can't tell you to go do that we are we are landless knights, and it is our job to protect the safety of the land. Absolutely. So when your hands are tied in this way, ours are not. Um, you you can't overstep your bounds by going into another fiefdom. We don't have that hmm. responsibility. We, we would still want to check in with whatever. Oh Lord yes, of, absolutely. Of that land. We, Let him we know would, that we're searching for bandits and that they may be on his land, and then they would most likely give us approval to do to get rid of them. But we we'll uh, never know. Yeah, we we go um, with the reasoning. We are verifying that they w that there was truly a knight behind this, and that this note and the information we received are accurate. And then then we work from there. That's a possibility for sure, and and guy, you know, Geimar is definitely down. He wants to make his name as a knight, and this is I, aside from tournaments. This is one way to do it. I have news for you that I was going to share at breakfast, but um. We were interrupted. So, 
Um, I think... Let me think on it. Let me think on it overnight and... Um, and see which way the wind blows and uh we'll we'll um we'll um we'll decide what to do next uh in the in the morning so uh we'll tip my my uh he has he has a uh, he has a young squire that's not been knighted. Uh, he's too young for that, and he says my squire will take care of him. And then the squire steps out and uh, takes the bandit from you, and says, um, "Yeah, we'll have probably a, uh, a maybe we can publicly execute him, and that way." Uh, the people in town will know that we mean business. And it'll spread word that uh, if you come onto my land and you... Uh, <clears throat> you uh, go against me, then there's, there's going to be harsh penalties. Uh, Derek? Yes? Um, I'm actually going to need to step away early tonight. I apologize. Okay. Um, I'm having an issue with the dog. Okay. So <laughs> All right. I apologize, but I can get caught up next week. Yeah. Or just watch the video. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Um, to have, have fun taking oh. care of that doggy. Uh, oh yeah. I'm thanks. Oh, <laughs> uh, it is. He's just having issues right now i've got to deal with so guys it's been a pleasure it was a great first game and thank you okay thank you yep see yep. you next week yep see ya okay so um yeah so so basically take the rest of the day gather your thoughts think about what's going on uh which really isn't a whole lot and in the morning, I'll gather my, I'll have gathered my thoughts and decide what I want to do with this prisoner, um, which probably is a public execution. But I don't want to jump, I don't want to get uh, jumped the gun just yet. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll pray on it, and then uh, in the morning I will let you know the the good news that i have for you that's um that might keep you from or will keep you from <laughs> pursuing this course of action uh i will let me think about it let's think about in the morning i'll let you know okay so uh it the is squire, the seventh correct it's what it's the seventh correct it is currently the seventh that's right. Um, seventh of, of Lorraine, and uh, he goes back in the in, in. You can tell that he's he's having a little bit of a hard time standing. He's he's still under the weather. It's not. He's not going to pass out or and die, but but it does look like he's he's not feeling well. Uh, the squire takes the prisoner off into one of the sheds, probably the tool shed, keeps him tied up, uh, locked him up, and uh, post a guard on him. And uh, in the morning, we'll figure out what, what to do with him. Um, so you guys are free to do whatever you would like to do in town. Or just sleep or... I need to visit the church. Okay, the Lorani priest in the manor or the Peony? Um, church. That is a toss-up. Uh, Lorani is who I'm devoted to, but the Peony priest is my friend, and I may need 
a confidant because I just killed someone for the first time. Okay. Well, the peony is a peony priest is actually in the manor, um, kind of overseeing the uh, well-being of the lord. Okay. Um. So if you wanna, if you wanna see him, that's no problem. Mass first. I'm gonna go to church. Reynard doesn't miss a service unless he has to. For like being sick. Okay, so you're going to church that's not being held? But it's the seventh. Yeah, yeah. Seventh or is who, it just first in the morning? Well, who whose service is on the seventh? Uh oh, is that the god's name, Almerida? No. Or El Almerada? It's what just you, high mass. What are you looking at? You the calendar. Yeah, high mass for who? Oh yeah, I was saying, isn't that the is that the god's name then? That Al No Almerada? It's it's the icon. Oh, oh that. Uh Lorani. Oh, yeah, Lorani. Okay. Yeah, so you can you would go into the to the chapel. Into the, the chapel name. and kneel and pray with the priest. Because I didn't get enough of that two days ago. <laughs> right. All right. So. You, so you're gonna you're gonna spend some time doing that. What about what about uh, Bernie? What is he doing? I think I'll take a, a walk down into town. Okay. And uh, go see the herdsmen. Um, <clears throat> Veldon. And, and just ask Veldon if he knows anything about the black boots or bandits or anything he's saying, if, or miners. Just kind of tell him the story of what happened. You know. Right. Okay. So yeah, you um you pray that's going to be for your we'll, we'll do a, like a a piety check here in a moment. And then Bernier's going uh I'm sorry. Where were you going again? In the, the center of town. I I don't have the map, but it's Uh-huh. It's Veldon the herdsman. Okay, so you go find the herdsman. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually, uh, he, you know, that he bounces around the mm -hmm. town quite a bit. He right. manages a, a, a variety of flocks, one of them being the, um, the goats, I think is the goats. I might know his routine well enough to track him down, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. One here, the here or there. The town's not so large that you couldn't just mm -hmm. ask a passerby, like, hey, where is he at? And they could yeah. easily just tell you where he's at. Right. Um, yeah, so you... Oh, okay, hold on. I got a bajillion different... Windows open. Okay. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Wonderful. That didn't. That didn't help. Okay. The herdsman. I'm going to give you um, a little information, and you can put it next to his name if you're tracking him at all. Uh, okay. It's going to be his house number, <laughs> his address, <laughs> um, so that it'll make it easier for me to look him up if I have to next time. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I'm, I gotta find him. He's not the Woodward. He's not the Miller. He's not... Um, you do know that there are a number of yeomen in town. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe three or four. Uh, these guys are all ex-soldiers that have retired and uh, they they're basically just they, they used to be soldiers now they're farmers you know mm. uh, but there's only like three or four of them okay herder 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 there's the orcharder the there's bee a herder on the map I thought that might be him that is that would be him okay Okay, it's number forty, Velden. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He has he I'll manages that, uh, during the winter herd of about two hundred, and the summer herd, which is now uh, more than five hundred uh, sheep. So it's sheep. That's what I was double checking. Um, he he maintains the the keep sheep, and then uh, he also has five children. And but he also helps out with any animal. Uh, he's kind of like the local pet doctor, you know, or pet pet. You know, if you got a pet, you need information or you know uh, remedies or something like that. He would be the one to go to. And that uh, Velton of Hanat. Where do I got him on the map? Right by the okay. Uh, right up there. I got pose. you. Yeah, that's Herder, Velden, that's him. Uh, yeah, so you find him. He's actually at home, tending tending to his own uh, family at the time. And you tell him... What, what, I'm going to tell, tell him that to be aware of of act, the activity in the area. I mean, I don't... He's the one person that I think, oh, he'll be affected by this. He could be. And then right. just to tell him the story, see if he ever saw anything about it. You know, did, or did okay. anybody in town know anything about it? That kind no, of thing. No. Um, no. Um, it's good to know that there's that. It's not good that there's bandits, but there's good to know that there's bandits in the area, so we can keep an mm -hmm. eye out for them and stuff like that. Um, and they've got their they've got their own name and. And mm -hmm. apparently they got their own stationery. <laughs> that sounds that sounds uh, like they've got. Uh, like they have they've really gotten... good. They've got good penmanship, but their parchment's all tore to heck. <laughs> yeah. So they've got like uh, what do you call it? Um, they got financial backing or something. Yeah. So it it would not be good. Um, and and you're sharing that with me, and he he's like, I, I really. I think that's uh I, I I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um but I unfortunately I don't think I can I don't think I have any like insight or any information about that. Do you tell them about? Do you share the fact that there was a boot on one of the victims? I would probably tell the whole story, okay, as much as I could, because it's just oh, you wouldn't believe what happened today. Kind of thing. Well, that's unusual because I heard of a person getting their uh, their throat slit, and when his body was found, it had a black boot on it. It had a, it had a black boot. Um, but this is, that was from a, um, a traveling merchant caravan that had come through here. You know, they shared some stories. Um, mm. Whenever any merchants come through this town, they stop at the common because that's that's a place where they could like park their wagons, um, and he's right across the street from there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I heard him talking about a couple of towns over. 
somebody had their that's the only thing I know that's that's the only thing that sounds familiar is there a market held at the common on a regular basis no yes and no people don't really have markets they they go to each other they sell stuff directly okay yeah they, everybody knows everybody the um but there is bi-monthly uh the harpers that live in the manor go to the common and perform for the village is that every two weeks or every, two months every 15 days or so okay twice a month mm -hmm. but that's really and that that's when the, the the village gets together to listen to the music and stuff like that uh, let off some steam they don't have a tavern you mm -hmm. know yeah okay and uh Sir Guy, what were you doing again? I'm trying to go through my memory. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. I'm gonna yeah, I saw you talking away. <laughs> and uh, I'll clean my armor, uh, sharpen my sword, just um, kind of stay close to home. Okay, perfect. Let's see um, what pops up. <clears throat> Okay. So do a little, do a little, um, what is it? Weapon smithing and, you know, just keeping all your stuff top, top tier. Yep. Okay. So, um, everyone gets back for dinner. You eat dinner, you go through your normal day and it's, it's the next day. Uh, after the, after the, I'm going to, tr I'm trying to find the, um, rules for this Okay Okay, it's probably not in the main rules. I'll get there eventually. Okay, I couldn't read it at that magnification. Okay. Obtaining piety. Sin. No, it's not sin. This is the mass. Okay, 30%. You just have to roll a 30 or less. Okay. Um. Blink. I success. <laughs> okay, so you get, took a sec. you get two piety points. Two? Yeah, that's incredible. Nice. Put Services may be attended by anyone. Yeah, so um, that was just a normal mass on the 7th. You know, the monthly, that's high mass. 
Hold on. That's high mass. Well, you made your roll anyway. Uh, but it's three piety points. So oh. instead of two, you get one more. Nice. Um... You know what? Put it back to two. Oh, okay. Just because I made a mistake. Yeah, my, my mistake penalizes you. High, <laughs> high mass is only for the clergy. Oh, okay. I will keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Low mass is for everyone. According to this. All right. It's good to know that. And uh, <clears throat> so you get your two because you rolled a 30%. I mean, if you did that every twice a week or what, once a month or however, long, you, could, you could actually uh, get all those piety points back from burning the uh, orphanage. Yeah. Okay, so um, on the next day, uh, I noticed that it's 15 till. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the calendar. And there's a couple of things I want you guys to do before we leave. Pick a skill that you used either successfully or failure. Doesn't matter, but you used it and you think you learned something from it. If you did, roll the, um, there's an up arrow on your character sheet to try to improve its level. Before you roll, the lower the skill is, the easier it is to increase because it's 100 minus your skill level. So if you've got like a 90 in something, you're only gonna have a 10% chance for it to go up. But if you've got a 10% in it, it's a 90% chance for it to go up. And everybody gets one of those. We'll go with tracking. I did succeed on that. And... Yeah, and it can be marginal or critical. It doesn't matter. If you succeed, it goes up by one point. The ML does? ML. Just the ML. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, every every um, wow, that's your result is a 107. How did that succeed? I don't know. I just hit the up arrow. But it's a 78 on a 14 was a success too on tracking. Well, you got to roll above it, right? He had a plus 10 for some reason. But I'd have to assume it's to roll under would be. Yeah, with this, Sir Raynard, yeah. you rolled a skill level. You rolled a skill, you didn't roll the advancement. Yeah, I know. That was my piety thing. I'm oh, still oh trying okay, to okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I got you. I got You're you. Good. Yeah, yeah, that works. Um, okay, let me test this. I was this. actually trying to remember what I clicked the up arrow on earlier so I could double check that it didn't change. Right. But I don't think it would be set up to change automatically. Mine didn't. Oh. I had to do it by hand. Right. It don't. It won't change automatically. Um. Okay. But let me see here. I got stealth. My ML is 33. There are things that give you pluses. Okay. Yeah, see my... Right. You would have to roll... You do have to roll higher. Because if you have a 10, then you want to roll an 11 to a 100. So this would su this would succeed, yeah, because it was higher than my target. That's right. Right. Rather than making it a percentile die roll, it's just 
rolled into the success side. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, mechanic. Okay. Um... Well, now I got to raise Sir Gamot's uh, stealth. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> He's somebody you might meet. Maybe not. We probably won't see him now. No, it's <laughs> it's pretty much guaranteed. <laughs> oh, he's 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 the most important character in this campaign. No, I can't. And I, I can't. Yeah. He's not. I thought Black Bart was. Oh, okay, yeah. So the ML was the target, <laughs> and I did good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you get a hundred and three? Uh, I don't. It looks like it's adding the SB to your roll. I think that is correct. I, I do believe that is correct. It sounds about right since I rolled in the 90s for everything I did today. Except for a couple of things. Oh, yeah. So the ML increases by one? I'm double checking that because that seems oh. awful low. Hmm. Um, increases by 90. <laughs> I would think maybe got... two or a D6 or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe the yeah. SB increases because there's like that. No, SB multiple. will never change. Okay. Right. Um, well, it'll change if your stats change, but there's no way for your stats to ever change. So, okay, let's take a look here. Except for magic. I figure I got a critical success with the mace. That's I learned how to break a man's neck. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> oh. You also get monthly points that um, basically you get, you're going to get daily points, but then you also get a lump sum at the end of the month, which <clears throat> if you, if you've been active, which you guys from now on are pretty much going to be. Okay. Assignment of skills, occupational skills, clothing, contacts. Maybe this is under character design? No. Um, Sir, stop. Rituals? Be gone. Shek Pavar? Careers? Okay. Skill base, effective, skill index. Okay, we don't need to worry about any of that. <coughs> skill testing. Okay. Penalties. Skill development. Here we go. Yeah, it's D100 plus your skill base, so that's true. And if it's greater than your ML, it'll increase by one. Okay. Um, Slow progression, but it's getting better. Right. Um... And it says the lump sum, which we'll talk about later, is it assumes that after meeting your basic requirements of living, eating, and sleeping, you have at least one spare hour a day to train. So it's basically giving you an hour of training a day for 30 days gives you those extra points. Okay. Then in that case, one a one point increase for what could just be one day isn't isn't small. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially considering, like with the the languages, what was it? You need like a hundred to be a local. And also, don't forget um, if you have a skill. That you want to learn some skills you don't need training you just need practice or application so if you do something you don't have and you want to roll on it i'll have to look it up to see what the number is but i think it starts at five plus your sb so it should be pretty fast when you say that you get a lump sum of skills is that just you can put them where you want or you still have to hit the arrow you still have to roll it's 30, okay. 30 rolls. So that, that was the thing, though. If you're trying to raise something with, uh, with a, a high ML, it could take four or five days to get a point. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Much easier to improve the low skills than the high skills. The other, the other, yeah, the, in the the high SB is a, it, definitely in your advantage because you're getting a bigger bonus. Right. So it's interesting. It's an interesting mechanic. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it does say thirty points. So at the end of a the the month, you get thirty points to spend to roll. Um, and if you roll, like, let's say you use broadsword and it's a 90%, you could just mm-hmm. keep, you could just keep putting 30 <laughs> points into it to try to just raise it up. But that just means you've been practicing all month with that sword and nothing else. Um, but, but the chances there are you go up three points, right? You might not get any, because any you have a rolls. 10% chance on 30 rolls. Right. Right. Yeah. True. So it might not ever go up. So it's wow. better to it's better to learn. Well, it's it's better it's better because your SB is going to be an added. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 more of like a six point game if you just spammed one right. skill at ninety. Yeah, right. That, that that see that's pretty cool, but it's a month. It's a month. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so what do you guys think? Because I'm going to end it. I liked it. I had a fun. I did, it didn't come off as complex like the way I thought it would be. It's, I mean, you you're running everything and all the math and doing everything behind the background, but <laughs> it's just like any other role playing game to a certain degree. You know, it was it was easy to easy to do and and fun. Thank you. You just get into yeah. your character more and and less less worrying about the numbers. Right, and the rules the rules aren't as bad as trying to learn the the interface. I'm or just, roll twenty, yeah, yeah. Roll twenty, all of the different how to how. It's, so it's exercising that interface in a couple sessions. That's like, that's going to be a no brainer. So it'll go better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And um, now I know that I've got to have all the unusual rules open because Mason is going to ask me <laughs> to do something that I haven't done yet. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> Um, I always okay, tell just, the guys. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go well, ahead. I, get, I always tell the guys that when I, when it's downtime, I'm trying to find something. I always say, "Be patient. I'm trying to fly a helicopter here." Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so many switches and buttons sometimes. The uh, the um, the campaign. Just just so you know, this is the slow part. There is going to be uh, a gradual build of of. Hopefully, high adventure. Hopefully. Hi, I don't know about high adventure, but it's going to be epic. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. it's still going to be low magic, but but it's not really because in in in, in my demented sense of the way I want to run a game, I I personally want there to be magic in the game. You know, I want there to be monsters. I want you to have to overcome. You know dragons and stuff like that right so it's not always going to be bandits around the corner i'm going to tell you right now that was that was a tutorial mission (laughs) you know (laughs) that was that was the uh you're you've just finished the epilogue now the adventure starts in the morning when he had because he has this good news for you guys and that's going to be the start of it all I'm selling you into slavery, and you're going across the world. He's not selling. He's already sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need you guys to go to this town and submit. <laughs> no. No, it's not going to be like that. But, um, yeah, I have high hopes for the game. I, I, mm-hmm. I And you guys you guys seem like you guys are a good group of guys. So, um, well, I guess I'll see you next week. I think we uh we got through the without too many bumps and bruises. Yeah. I'm actually surprised nobody got injured. I, yeah, that was kind of a miracle. Yeah, I have injury um I have a modified injury recovery rule that I'm using. Uh it's a lot faster, but um a lot a lot faster, but uh it's still not instantly. You just don't take a one hour long rest and have all of your hit points back. You know, it's not like that. 
All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next Thanks. week. Good meeting you guys. You guys yep. have a good one next week. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Am I still streaming? I think I'm still streaming. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was new for me than my very first Harn game. And we're going to have more to come. All right. Catch you next time.